2023, we are focusing on our finances. The holidays may have left some of us with debt, but here's what you can do now to get your money in order. Santa has come and gone, but now you may be left with a stack of bills you need to slay. While some tried to keep the jingle in their pockets. Trying to spend as little money as possible and get as many gifts as possible. Others dash their way into debt. Holiday retail sales expected to hit $960 billion, up at least 6% from last year. A recent survey showed shoppers charged on average $663 on their credit cards. Close to a third of those who used a credit card to buy presents last year carried that debt into this holiday season. A lot of us will overeat, overconsume during the holidays. Is that the same when it comes to our financial health? Absolutely. If you're consuming too much alcohol or food during the holidays, you better hit the gym in January. You better have a plan of attack to get those five or 10 extra pounds off. Same thing with your money. Kathy Pareto is a financial planner in Miami. She says discipline can help you whip your pocketbook back into shape, starting with a financially dry January. Really harness your budget that month, cut out all the unnecessary stuff so that if you did rack up some debt in the holiday season, you can focus your income towards debt repayment. Other ways to boost your finances, Pareto suggests a temporary side hustle, selling or returning any unwanted gifts. And when tackling credit card debt, pay down the balance on the card with the highest interest first. She says you can also consider a balance transfer. Just make sure you look for a credit card with a low to zero introductory rate and no fees. If you've dropped the ball when it comes to managing your money, Pareto says the new year marks the perfect time to hit the reset button. While the magic number varies for everyone, she suggests saving at least 10% of your annual salary, allocating money for emergencies and life goals like retirement and sending your kids to college. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. I like the idea of auto doing anything. So auto savings, right? If you have a, a, a target for spending, even go old school, maybe put the cash in an envelope and limit yourself to that. As the year comes to a close, take time to update your tax deductions and adjust your 401k deferrals. In 2023, the contribution limit increases to $22,500. But if you can't afford to put away that much, Pareto says try to save at least what your employer will match. Many will match you dollar for dollar for your annual contributions up to 4 to 6%. If your company doesn't offer a retirement plan, you can invest on your own, contributing to either a traditional or Roth IRA. And even though we just opened presents, it's never too early to start unwrapping plans for Santa's next visit. What can we do now for the coming year to help us get into a better spending cycle? You have 12 months to be able to really think through how you want to spend, who you want to spend for, and what that might cost. And start to save for that. When you go shopping, you already have it all saved up and you don't have to incur any debt. 2022 ended on a streak of falling gas prices, but that's come to an end. Recent winter storms putting pressure on both prices at the pump and on your home heating bill. Here's Emily Akeda on how to cut those costs. Just days into the new year and Americans are already feeling the pain at the pump again. What's to blame? Sweeping winter storms shutting down refineries, sharply driving up gas prices for the first time in two months. I think I just got screwed. The national average for a gallon of gas reaching $3.26 today. That's up 13 cents since just last week, with some states seeing much larger increases. There still is time that we could see falling prices by mid and late January. But much of that is also going to be contingent on China's oil consumption as they reopen and could potentially offset price relief. To stretch your dollar further on the road, experts say accelerate gradually and reduce your speed on highways. Avoid leaving your car idling, which can save half a gallon of gas per hour, and use apps to find the cheapest gas stations near you. This is 309 BJ's. Is uh, 280. The recent spike in prices, a one-two punch for families who have dealt with sky-high energy bills, driven in part by Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. Natural gas forecasted to cost 28% more for the average family this winter, and heating oil up 27%, though experts say the new year is beginning to usher in some relief. We're at the 
close to the peak. Um, I wouldn't say we're at the peak yet. Relief business owner Albi Perez says he and his customers have yet to feel weary from months of wild energy costs. Unfortunately, we have to raise our prices to be able to stay competitive and, and actually keep the doors open. When it comes to saving on home heating, experts say consider investing in better insulation. Look into a space heater. They can be more cost efficient than central heat and install a programmable thermostat to automatically adjust the temperature. So this winter doesn't wash away your savings. Prices of another household staple are rising. Eggs. The average family spends more than $5,000 a year on groceries, and inflation has only driven that hefty bill higher. A year ago, the national average for a dozen of eggs was below $2. Today, shoppers are shelling out two, even three times as much. Here's Emily Aketa. Inflation may be easing overall, but sticker shock at supermarkets is sticking around. They just continually go up. Grocery store staples like flour, bread, and milk surging by double digits in 2022. Chicken, coffee, and fruits and veggies shrinking shoppers' wallets too. This little bag, it's, it's, it's $12 worth of ham, okay? It probably was $5 a year ago. But it's eggs that are serving the biggest blow to budgets. The national average for a dozen, more than doubling in costs from 2021, jumping even more in some states. $8, eight cash, oh my lord. And that's if you can find them at all. Looks like eggs are the new toilet paper, one Twitter user wrote, joining the chorus of shoppers airing their frustrations on social media. Experts say food prices have been impacted by severe weather, labor shortages, and Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. But when it comes to soaring egg prices, another big reason is the deadliest avian flu on record, which is impacting almost every state. So once one bird gets that flu, they all get taken out in short order. To what degree has the avian flu impacted supply? It's reduced supply by 5% year over year. Economists say high egg prices could hang on for months. Bad news for shoppers and businesses alike. Raspberry coconut or lemon lavender? We first met bakery owner Renee Ferris last spring. It's pretty bad. She's stunned the sky-high cost of baking essentials has persisted for this long. First it was the pandemic, now it's inflation. Does it feel like you can't catch your breath? Yes, we're a bakery, so our items are uh, butter, milk, eggs, flour, and those are the things that are, are the highest in price right now. Still, shoppers can find bargains in a few corners of the supermarket. The price of bacon, steaks, and avocados all falling in recent months. For further savings, experts say create a meal routine that will make grocery shopping more predictable for your wallet. While prepackaged veggies and cheese can save you time, opt for whole items to save money. And look for select essentials at dollar stores, like name brand cereals and snack bags. All of it to help stretch your dollar further and beat back inflation. That was NBC's Emily Aketa. Coming up, looking to travel? What's hot this coming year? And later, life or death choices? How to save on your prescription drugs? What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
If one of your New Year's resolutions is to get out and about more in 2023, Craig Melvin recently spoke to travel expert Mark Elwood to get some fun ideas that won't break the bank. I mean, here's the thing right now, and folks who just traveled over the holidays certainly know this to be true. Hotels are up, air travel's up, everything seems to be more expensive when it comes to travel. Is that a trend that we can expect to continue in 2023? It is, but I would say I think I'm going to follow the rule rule, if I can say that. Okay. And say if you're staying at a hotel and you're worried about the price, especially an independent hotel, email them and say, hey, I'd love to make a booking right now. Can you work with me on the price? And you'd be surprised how a little polite negotiation yeah. saying, look, if you work with me on this, I'll give you my business. They really, could, they really could work with you on that. Never heard that. So you can actually call the front desk and say, we want to come. Can you, give us a, can you give us a deal? Yeah, what kind of deal could you work? But be okay. nice about it. Be ni yes, always. Always. You know? So let's talk about some of these new travel trips yep. because a few of these actually surprised me. Okay. Um, my wife has talked about this first one, perhaps unsurprisingly. <laughs> I was going to say. We're talking about solo female travel. So the Solo Female Travelers Club, which sort of does what it says on the tin, yeah. it surveyed 5,000 women and found that about two-thirds of them wanted to go do a, an independent female group trip. So in other words, not single women, but women who want to travel singly like your wife saying hey i feel like traveling with my girlfriends bit of me time that's a big big new trend what kind of options are we talking about here so lolo pass is really interesting about 18 months old i call it a postal it's like a posh hostel a postal a postal okay um, in portland uh, oregon great on the east side right you know great food and beverage but what's really important is there's female areas so it's very much a gender divided you can choose to be in an all female dorm room, oh. four friends, four beds together, really like sleepaway camp, but as a grown-up. Okay. And I'm, we're looking at great prices here. You know, 125 for a private room, 35 for a bed. All right. I'm not eligible for this one, but no. I am eligible for this next one, which I, I think is pretty cool. We're talking about retro travel. So, Booking.com surveyed uh, people about their plans for 2023, and basically everybody said, I want to go on a nostalgic trip that takes in all American classic movie locations. Yeah. So I've got somewhere that's a classic Olympic location. Where? Which is Lake Placid. Oh, we love Lake Placid. And we love Eastwind. This is an amazing hotel from the 1950s, a retro motor lodge. If Happy Days was a hotel, it would be Eastwind. It starts at 200 bucks a night, and you can enjoy all of those classic Olympic details. The museum there's just been redone. All of the winter sports that meant it was an Olympic yeah. destination, you can do them. It's, and we've, we've actually, we haven't been to that place, but we've been to Lake Placid a number of times. Love Lake Placid. Charming, really um, charming. This is something that my family and I, we've actually talked about doing this year. Camping. Well, no. Glamping. I was going to say, they're not, gla not camping. Right. Glamping. Glamping, yes. This is all about our return to the outdoors. During the pandemic, travel really embraced the chance to be in the fresh air, individual, out in nature. And we're seeing people really still want to do that. But if you're like, you and me, yeah. we've got a, a few creature comforts. We'd like to rough it. We don't want to rough it too much. I mean, I want a bathroom, all of that. Right. So, Hatopia is this gorgeous French camping company. I call it pret a -Compe rather than pret a -Porte. This is ready to camp. These hut, these tents are yeah. put up. Look, I mean, look at this. They're put up in locations where they will not impact the environment. They don't cut trees down to put them up. If they move from the location within, within six months, 80% of the, of the land looks like virgin land. There's, there's a handful of them around the country, yeah. you can see. They're also opening in Northern California and Florida, and it starts at 85 bucks a That's night. a deal. Right? That's a deal. Would okay. That, can you, maybe? Hotopia? Hotopia. Okay. Or we say it with the French accent. Hotopia. <laughs> Family reunions making quite the comeback. This is all about two trends coming together. During the pandemic, obviously, we didn't travel in the way we were used to traveling. No. And we also have, everyone has family maybe far flung in the country, even overseas, also harder to see. So we're seeing people put that together and say, I'll meet the grandparents in the Caribbean. I'll bring my cousin over from Jamaica. Yeah. I'm saying Salt Lake is a great place to, to convene because it's a Delta hub. And there are almost 100 non-stop flights from Salt Lake on Delta around the country. Did you know that? I did, I did, only because we were in Salt Lake City last year, yeah. So you're like, yeah, I get this. So I recommend Salt Lake, also you've got Park City, you've got great winter sports, and you've also got an amazing new hotel with, they're called Studio Commons Rooms. You put them together, yeah. basically bring your own wing, starts at 189. Got about 30 seconds left. Ah. Cruising is back. It is back, it is different. Cruising didn't happen as much during the pandemic, of course. They reconfigured themselves and thought, what does cruising mean today? 
They thought about history, they thought about engagement. Holland America starts at $5.79 per person per room per trip. You're getting great engagement with places like Juneau in Alaska, one of the places that Holland America started. The boats themselves have Dutch high teas, and even better, there's a throwback happy hour. It could be 75 cents for your drink. 75 cents? 75 cents. Okay. Mark Elwood, thank you as always, Mark. Pleasure. Always good to have you. Thank you, thank Happy you. Happy travels. Thank you to Craig and Mark there. Still to come, they are not the usual suspects. The different memberships you may already have that could help you save money. Plus, as car prices go up, so do car thefts. What you need to know to make it harder for thieves to steal your set of wheels. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. With car prices on the rise, experts are warning we will be seeing the highest rate of car thefts in more than a decade. But there are some simple things you can do to make it harder for thieves to steal your set of wheels. <laughs> Caught on camera, a joyride in a stolen car in Milwaukee. These criminals in Chicago stealing 10 luxury cars right from a dealership. In Washington, D.C., this suspect captured right on the car's dash cam. He's not hard. He's losing it. And in Glendale, Wisconsin, thieves lead police on a dangerous chase through the streets off road. Lost the tire. Finally, coming to an end. Scenes like these playing out coast to coast with thieves even taking cars right from driveways. Already in 2022, 745,000 cars stolen, with experts predicting this year we'll see the most car thefts in 14 years. Since 2008, we have not seen numbers like this. We are going to approach 1.1 million cars stolen, and that's a 24% increase during the COVID-19 pandemic. David Glowie is the president and CEO of the National Insurance Crime Bureau. He says last year, Bakersfield, California, Denver, Colorado, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Portland, Oregon had the highest rates of car thefts, with Kia and Hyundai the most popular cars targeted by thieves. The price of used cars and car parts are up astronomically. Used cars are up almost 40 percent. The value is what's driving the criminal enterprises. They're worth a lot of money. To learn how to make it harder for thieves to steal your car, I team up with Mike Sapraconi, former NYPD detective and now president of Squad Security. So, Mike, here's the thing. How are these thieves making off with so many people's cars these days? You know, Vicky, it's because we're lazy. Mm -hmm. We leave the key inside. We leave the fob inside. Always take it with you, even okay. if it's for a second. If you have to run back in the house, remember, let's not make it easy for them. Take the key, lock your door. Police warn luxury cars with folding mirrors are especially vulnerable. When the mirrors are open like this, it usually means the car is open and your key fob might be inside the key car. Oh. So by closing them, uh -huh. what you're doing is you're telling the bad guys, this car's locked 
and there's no fob in there. And they're going to just walk away and go to another car, an easier target. If you have a garage, put your car, not your stuff, in it. You pull into your garage, what's the first thing you should do? Close the door. Close the door, wait till you hear the girl go down, mm -hmm. and you see the door down, then you can turn off your car and exit your vehicle. Why do you want your garage door to be closed before you get out? So nobody can run in behind you, okay? And then, then all of a sudden, if someone gets in behind you, now they have a shot of taking your car, taking your phone, taking everything, possibly even burglarizing your house. What's your advice for the code when it comes to your garage keypad? Be creative. Don't use one, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero. Don't use your address. Come up with something new and different. As for parking in the driveway? I like to pull in those first. Okay. Every second counts. It takes longer to back it out than to pull out. What about these GPS tags? Tile makes one, Apple makes one, Samsung too. Do you think you should put one of these in the car? I think it's a great idea. Any advantage we can. But always keep in mind, the police know how to do their job. Let them track these, not you personally. And hide the tracker where a thief won't look. Security cameras can be a good way to keep your property safe, so consider installing one and park your car in its field of view. What if your only option is to park your car on the street? Well, you want to park as close as you can to the other vehicle, mm -hmm. and you want to turn your wheels to the curb, so it makes it more difficult for them to tow your car away. Thieves are actually towing people's cars no, away? without a doubt. Of course they are. Get this. Thieves can even strike while you're driving. It's called a, a bump and rob. Okay, where someone's going to come up in front of you, stage a fake accident, hmm. you're going to run into them, and then someone may come up behind you. But the whole purpose is to get you out of the car so someone could jump in and take your car. They'll steal your car when in you get second. out. In a second, that's right. So you need to know, don't ever get out of the car. Okay. Make sure your doors are locked, call 911, okay, wait for the police to come. The National Insurance Crime Bureau says most insurance plans won't cover you if your car gets stolen. They recommend adding what's called comprehensive coverage, which costs anywhere from about $100 to $300 more a year. So they come, ways to save on your prescriptions and unusual ways to find everyday discounts. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load. Every single morning. NBC News. Streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop start, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. How many of you were up there? At least, like, 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, on Lester. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. At the start of a new year, health care costs can be staggering as deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums reset. But this year, there are other stressors as well. So how can you save on your prescriptions? Here's a step-by-step -step guide. It's all too common. Sticker shock at the pharmacy. It's $250 a month. My copayment was $660. $17,000. $710 for a milliliter. As the new year gets underway, it can be especially shocking as deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums reset and insurance plans update their drug coverage. You could be left footing the bill. At the beginning of each year, everybody's plan changes. Consumer Reports Lisa Gill says the best way to combat those sudden price hikes starts with a phone call and a few key questions. Give your insurance company a call and find out how well is this drug covered? Is it covered at another pharmacy, a preferred pharmacy at a lower cost? Turns out there are a lot of options. If you have a high deductible or a high pharmacy copay and you take mostly generic medicines, there are multiple discount pharmacies that can help you pay less without using your insurance. 
Some, like Costco, Walgreens, and Scripco, offer discounted meds for customers who pay a membership fee. Others, like GoodRx and Single Care, help find coupons that you can use at other pharmacies. Then there are the online pharmacies that take insurance, like Blink Health, and the ones that typically don't, like Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drug Company. We called Walgreens to see how their discount membership compares when it comes to the most common generic in the U.S. Okay, bye-bye. So I just got off the phone with Walgreens, and they wanted to charge me $94 for a one-month supply of a common cholesterol medication, the generic. But if I joined their membership program for $20, I could get that drug for $15 a month. Get this, when I went online to the Mark Cuban Cost Plus Drug Company website, I found I could get a 90-day supply for under five bucks. Finding savings for brand name medications is a little different. If you have insurance through your employer, go directly to the drug manufacturer's website and look for something called a copay coupon, or in this case, it's called a savings card. That could mean a big discount for you. If you're on Medicare or uninsured, you should still call the drug maker directly and ask about any assistance programs. Over time, those programs have expanded quite dramatically to mm -hmm. the point that you can have insurance, a moderate income, and still receive really dramatic discounts or even free medication. The website needymeds.org has info on both of these types of prescription cost assistance plans for a huge variety of brand name drugs. But Gil says it's still important to check in with your insurance. You don't want to be surprised later in the year when you find out that you never met that deductible. If you've tried everything and still can't pay, Gil says your best resource might be local independent pharmacies. Not only will they negotiate, they will also often help you find copay programs or patient assistant programs to lower those drug costs. We are all looking for ways to save and sometimes the shortcuts are right in front of us, from signing up for various memberships to apps that give you access to Oscar-winning content for free. We found some really simple and surprising ways to put a few dollars back into your wallet. With rising costs on essential needs, the inflation is awful. Everything costs so much. It's time to get smart about saving. We're all trying to figure out ways to save money um, and to be super impactful with our spend especially as the holidays approach. And the discounts are out there. A simple library card can actually save you from hefty streaming subscriptions. Apps like Overdrive, Hoopla, and Canopy offer catalogs of content for free. And one surprising trend now among young people, signing up for benefits from the AARP. Contrary to popular belief, you can be any age to join AARP. And the benefits are awesome. The Wall Street Journal finding 20-somethings as new card carriers in an effort to snag discounts amid inflation, showing it's not just for the 50 and older crowd. In my head, it was always something for senior citizens. 28-year-old Marissa Schwartz says she learned a lot about AARP benefits through TikTok and couldn't help but join in on the savings and even convinced her parents to do the same. In a similar fashion, a AAA membership can also land you deals from food, entertainment, and travel, while wholesale clubs are a popular way to save in bulk. I paid about $200. Um, I think there's way more than $200 worth in this basket. I mean, it's just crazy how expensive it all is, and it really, it just adds up. Maximize your wholesale membership by sharing with another person to cut costs. Alone, Costco's memberships can run $60 a year, $120 if you're looking at the executive level, while Sam's Club is $50 per year, $110 for its Plus membership. And before you sign up, check out sites like Groupon, Retail Me Not, and Slick Deals for discounts on the membership itself. I think people love a deal. It's the idea that the buy one, get one, the 10% off, the 15% off, you really feel like you're gaming the system. But buyer beware of signing up for too many costly memberships. Experts suggest narrowing down the necessities first to determine which ones will be the most impactful and avoid getting overrun by the club fees. You have to be really thoughtful with these memberships because if you're going to spend money to join a membership, then you need to really make sure it's worth it on the back end. That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn.
I scream, you scream. I, okay, I'm going to stop right there because I know you know how it goes. We are here at New York City's legendary Lexington candy shop. Happens to be my neighborhood luncheonette. And there was a time when soda fountains and diners like this were all over New York City and all over the country. Whether it's a cone, a sundae, or mm, an ice cream float. I got to tell you, there's nothing that brings back memories like places like these. Today, we're getting the scoop and diving into the history of America's beloved sweet shops. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. It's no coincidence that here at the Lexington Candy Shop, one of New York City's most iconic soda fountains, they serve ice cream from the city of brotherly love. It's Bassett's, the oldest ice cream company in America. In fact, Philadelphia is home to many early ice cream innovations. And at the Franklin Fountain, we've got two brothers who have recreated a turn of the century fountain that celebrates Philadelphia's unique contribution to American ice cream history. We're very proud to be called Soda Jerks. In the heyday of soda fountains, being called a jerk was a good thing. A soda jerk is someone that jerks the handle on the soda fountain. We are the Burley Brothers. I'm Ryan. And I'm Eric Burley. Welcome. Come on in. Stepping into the Franklin Fountain is like time traveling to a bygone era. I've always felt a kinship for the turn of the century. It just feels like maybe I was there in a past life. The Burley family originally purchasing this historic property in 2002, but they weren't sure what to do with the storefront until inspiration struck. The building is really what inspired us uh, to do what we do here. It was built around 1899, and the original tin ceiling remains as well as the penny tile floor. So we really thought that a soda fountain kind of looked right for the space. There's certainly a sense of awe and wonder, sort of a, a transport through the time machine when you walk in the door, and that was really intentional. The brothers working for nearly two years to restore the space. It is not for the faint of heart to restore any old building. It's a labor of love. And frankly, we wouldn't have it any other way. It's part of the handmade nature of everything that we do here. The kitchen itself was a preservation element, restoring the motor on the buttercream machine, fixing the belts. You know, the restoration of the building wasn't just the facade, but it's also the back of house spaces. They also embarked on a mission to recreate an authentic fountain experience. We took a number of road trips, in part to learn about the ice cream business, and then we would always pair soda fountain tours with those. So visiting places in the American South, going down to New Orleans, going to Savannah, seeing these old fashioned soda fountain places, interviewing the soda jerks, the pharmacists, and really learning the culture of the soda fountain was a big part of our research. Today, while we may take the simple pleasure of eating an ice cream cone for granted, that wasn't always the case. I'm Sarah Lohman. I'm a food historian, author, and ice cream expert. Let's go back to when ice cream was a luxury, largely available to only the richest of Americans. We don't think of these as expensive ingredients today, but ice and sugar historically were very rare, and so only the wealthiest people could afford them. So it was usually made in the home, and by home I mean a large grand estate, by people who had servants, and then eventually people who owned other people. We're talking about the enslaved. So you also needed that literal manpower to make it. That all begins to change in the 19th century as technology and supplies change. Traditionally, European ice cream was made with a custard base that included eggs. But a simpler style emerged in Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is the most important city to ice cream history, maybe Pennsylvania as a whole, because we had the invention of Philadelphia-style ice cream by a black man. Augustus Jackson 
a black man who was a White House chef working under multiple presidents, including Andrew Jackson, is credited with advancing a new type of ice cream and method. And he came up with an ice cream base that didn't use eggs, but was just as like creamy and luscious, but could be made with less ingredients, made quicker, and he supposedly had really, really tasty flavors too. A free man. He later moved back to his native Philadelphia to start his own business. So he made it and sold it, but then he also sold it to other ice cream shops too, and became very famous and very wealthy for this new style of ice cream. Jackson's contributions made ice cream more widely available to more consumers. Philadelphia is also home to the oldest ice cream company in America, Bassett's. I'm Alex Bassett Strange, was my great, great, great grandfather that started this company all the way back in 1861. We're proud to be here today. Bassett's was the first merchant to sign a lease in Philadelphia's historic Reading Terminal Market. And the family is still there serving up scoops today. Bassett's ice cream is a 16.5% butterfat ice cream, and it's what's called a Philadelphia style, which means that it's made without any egg yolk. Innovations to ice cream production, allowing more shops like Bassett's to open up in the early 1900s, and that ushered in a new type of meeting place where folks could socialize. And then we also had ice cream saloons. Now, the name there is key, saloon, yeah, it means bar. And at this time, bars were places where only men could go, but ice cream saloons were one of the first public spaces that was socially acceptable for women to go to. So to have a public space was really meaningful to women, to have a space where you felt free, to have a space where you could safely flirt. Soda fountains and parlors became even more popular and almost necessary during the 1920s. When prohibition hits and we ban the sale of alcohol, then there's really a need for these public spaces for people to gather and socialize outside of the home. And as we move into the soda fountain era, we have a lot of creativity in adding ice cream to different flavors of soda and making these incredible concoctions and sundaes. If you were a soda jerk at the turn of the century, you were kind of a local celebrity. Today, the jerks in charge at Franklin Fountain are serving up nostalgia along with their vintage creations. It's one of our newer uh, soda syrups. It's uh, made with real watermelon fruit. Come over here to our 1905 soda fountain. Yeah. Mm, that is really good. Uh, you know, I don't want to mess with that flavor too much, so I'll just go with vanilla. Uh, vanilla ice cream just rounds everything out nice, plays nice at the playground. And the bean specks on the vanilla show that it's made with real vanilla, not vanillin. And that's an old Philadelphia tradition of having bean specks in their vanilla ice cream. Franklin Fountain's menu focuses on classics, but they also bring back long forgotten flavors. Summer hits like black walnut that tend to be kind of bitter, but mixed with enough sweetness can be really unique and good. Other flavors like pawpaws, which are our native fruit here in North America. While others misses. Uh, a flavor that kind of bombed here, uh, as an example, I'll tell you, it was orange pineapple. Like we really wanted to bring back orange pineapple as an ice cream, which was really popular at the turn of the century. But the Burleys aren't just passionate about their flavors. They are working to keep a tasty tradition alive. Our business has really enabled the preservation of a couple of historic buildings here on the block. And we hope that the, the fountain and the institution of the soda fountain continues and you know can be passed to succeeding generations of uh, soda jerks. Coming up, I visit a family-owned ice cream shop in Harlem and get a sweet surprise. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Uncle Lester. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. 
I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Finish this sentence. Ice cream is... Love. Ice cream is not easy to make. <laughs> <laughs> and see. We're up here in Harlem where the forecast is partly cloudy with a 100% chance of sprinkles. Why? Because we're outside Sugar Hill Creamery where they're bringing the community together one scoop at a time. Let's check it out. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Hi, How it's nice are to you? meet you. That's Nick and Petrushka Larson, husband and wife, and parents to Isla, Zadie, and Nico. So let's talk ice cream. They're also the owners of Harlem's Sugar Hill Creamery, which the couple opened in their beloved neighborhood in 2017. We're gonna give you the scoop, Al. Bam! For the couple, that bam moment came after meeting up with friends in DC for some premium scoops. We had small batch delicious ice cream, and that is when it hit us that this was not an experience that we could have in our own neighborhood. The realization that they couldn't do this in Harlem was the beginning of their sweet journey. When Nick and I started dating, he always said he wanted to own a food establishment of some sort. And then this, you know, moment in life kind of presented the opportunity. Patricia oversees the shop's marketing and business, while Nick, well, he develops their artisanal flavors, often looking to the neighborhood for inspiration. The great thing about having a small shop, you see in real time, oh yeah, they don't like this, <laughs> right? And, and our, you know, and our friends from Harlem, they are not shy to be like, yo, no, no, this is no yeah. good. <laughs> so your flavors are nods to Harlem. Not to Harlem, not to our respective cultures as well. So my, I'm black, African American, and from the Caribbean. And Nick is from the Midwest and was raised on a farm. We're channeling Harlem, we're channeling childhood memories, we're channeling the way that we were raised, what we were eating. I think this is the best uh, example of channeling our neighborhood. So we have a, a, a flavor called Cafe Tuba. And where the first location is, it's like a few blocks from Little Senegal. The flavor Cafe Tuba uses coffee from Senegal. We incorporate peanut brittle and the lean pepper brownies. Mm. So it's a bit of a twist on a classic, which we like to say we make, you know, twists on classics and then all their flavors that you wouldn't expect. Many features of the scoop shop pay homage to Harlem, starting with the name. Where we're sitting right now is a neighborhood that is adjacent to Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill is a neighborhood in Harlem that at the turn of the 20th century was the, the place where a, upwardly mobile black people resided and, and came to, right? It was also the home of the Harlem Renaissance too. Many artists, activists were living here. You know, you talk about the history and homages to this neighborhood. Uh, was there some thoughts about that, that historic uh, ice cream shop, Bumford's? Yes. Just before opening Sugar Hill, Patrushka learned about an iconic Harlem institution, Tomford's small group of octogenarian Harlemites that just happened to be at this conference and they were like, hey, she's opening an Abbey Ice Cream shop. This is crazy. And they're like, oh my gosh, It'll, it's like Tomford. Tomford's was in business from 1903 to 1983, located in the heart of Harlem at 125th and St. Nicholas. Unlike many early soda fountains, it catered to black patrons, providing much more than food and ice cream. It was the place that people went after, you know, church uh, on a date. And we didn't know about it when we decided to open the shop, but after we learned about it, before we opened the shop, we definitely channeled the, the history and spirit of that place here. Sugar Hill's motto, the sweet life is a love affair between community and food. And it also has 
and historical meaning. The sweet life is also you know, a reference to the Great Migration. You know, when people moved to Sugar Hill, they were looking forward to sweet life. We wanted to give our neighbors a little bit of sweet life as well, right? Nick and Petrushka are hopeful that their spot will become the place for making family memories down the line. Later down the line is to hear stories like people talking about Tomfords that are talking about what, you know, what we meant to them, right? To be a place where somebody could come in and say, my parents met here. What an honor. And I, think, I don't think that we take our role as, you know, the people who created this company lightly. Like, it is such an honor to be able to serve our neighbors and to also be a place that they continue to come back to. I think that a lot of us have really fond memories of going with our family um, and having ice cream on a hot summer day, or like rolling past a rural ice cream stand and it's just like packed with little league kids. Or when you live in a city, you've got your local ice cream place that you can walk to and the whole neighborhood is there. And as for the future of Sugar Hill Creamery? With, with three kids, uh, Nick, are, are you hoping that out of those three, one of them is going to carry on the tradition? It's a tricky question. Yes, I would, but you know, I'm not going to pressure them. At the very least, we need them to work here during exactly. high school. Exactly. Okay? Like, like, like. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, morning Good morning, welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. It's time for Sunday School. Say amen, say hallelujah. <laughs> amen! Hallelujah! <laughs> My Sunday school teachers at Harlem Sugar Hill Creamery kicked off my lesson with a special treat, a one-of-a-kind flavor made just for me. You should learn to scoop with your own, uh, my own flavor. Your own flavor. My own flavor. Yeah. Wow. All of the ice cream served at Sugar Hill Creamery is small batch, each flavor taking two days from start to finish. The difference between a small batch and large batch is one is a freezer. These machines allow more experimentation with mix-ins. The reason why it's homemade and why it's better to use a small batch, for example, is you have freedom to do whatever the hell you want. You're not beholden to what can fit into an automated machine that, like, for example, can't put a particular like sauce in it because it'll be too thick or it'll jam something, you know, things like that. And now, back to Sunday school. So what's my flavor? So your flavor, so we've heard around the way uh -huh. that you uh that you're a friend you're a fan of cookies and cream i am also that you like sweet potato pie so i do okay so this is a combination and pecans of, well right? the pecan element is yeah. a part of the sweet potato pie but, but yeah. yes i can tell you guys are married no. <laughs> for my signature flavor nick started with a sweet cream base then adding nilla wafers blended in made a uh graham cracker pie crust or pecan Ooh. uh roast sweet potatoes Cook it uh, down with basically it's a holiday IPA, mm -hmm. 
and uh, poured the beer in it, blended it up, and then made it like a custard with, uh, with eggs. Wow. A lot goes into that. A lot goes into it. And a lot goes into forming the perfect scoop. But picture perfect scoops wouldn't be the same without one very important invention. The ice cream scoop was invented by a black man. Alfred Crawley holds a patent for the ice cream mold and disher. And that's the scoop that's like, it has a little handle that you squeeze and the thing scrapes and the ice cream plops out. Uh, he invented that in 1897 and sort of revolutionized ice cream culture. So the side here is to form it, the tip is to like kind of scrape it, right? So if you're like just learning, the best way is just a little bit at the top, like that. Sides and boom. And you, you form it with the side. Oh, right? so you're forming the ball. The ball, the yeah, exactly. All right, voila. Ta-da. Right. So, the cup, got a little rinse. Rinse. Okay, so you, you start. You can well, also uh, grab out the sides there too, because oh, it's a little, little softer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a sad yeah. scoop. No, no, look, now good. you're gonna form oh, it. Oh, now it's forming. Now you're, mm -hmm. now it's forming. Oh, yep, look, at, look that at that now. Oh, See? hey, now we're talking. There it is. Wow. There it is. Good. Hey, now. All right, let's taste. All, All right. right, time to taste. The Al Roker. Cheers. Well, actually. Oh, we also have a special name for it. Oh, what's that? It's uh, your neck of the woods. Oh, I like Get it. it. <laughs> wow. And this, this is, is great. Yeah. Like all Sugar Hill flavors, there's an art to naming the ice cream. For example, their best-selling blueberry cheesecake, well, it's named for Petrushka. So this is uh, named after my wife, who's the chairperson of the board. She's the boss. This is the boss flavor. You're smart man. <laughs> this, is the, this is the chief. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. My work here is done. Coming up, a whimsical creamery in Las Vegas, known for its colorful creations. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, I'm This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for a pop star thing. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. You know the old saying, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, especially when it comes to a hot spot that's known for creating really cool desserts, cream berry. These folks are recreating the ice cream parlor experience for a whole new generation of ice cream fans. And whether that's in person or via social media posts. Selfie anyone? I've seen some kids who can kill the burrito by themselves. Most adults, it's funny, they would share. <laughs> in Las Vegas, a few miles off the strip, is the flashy, fabulous, and insta-famous ice cream shop Creamberry, opened in 2016 by husband and wife team Danny and Rosalina C, hoping to create a one-stop dessert cafe. We set on a mission to bring in a wide variety of crazy, innovative desserts into one place. For Danny, it was a dream come true. I've always had a sweet tooth when I was younger, and I've always loved ice cream. Rosalina, not so much right away. She favored traditional icy desserts from her native Indonesia, not American ice cream. 
We love sweet stuff, but we don't uh, really love like ice cream, ice cream, but more to like shave ice. I said, why don't we bring our Indonesia dessert to our menu? And just like that, Creamberry started offering shaved ice. So we have the secret ingredients, which is the sauce, the red one, that make it very good with the condensed milk, with everything fruit on top for the shaved ice, and then it's a good combination. Danny's focus was on the full menu, adding unique treats from around the world to Creamberry, desserts like Thai rolled ice cream and Filipino hala halo. Recognizing the power of social media, Rosalina began posting photos and videos of their decadent creations to Instagram, and then later to TikTok. It's a practice that keeps modern ice cream parlors relevant, according to food historian Sarah Lohman. I think social media is important because, I mean, there's, there's people out there who are following ice cream places that maybe, maybe they'll go to, maybe they'll never go to, but it's like the visual appeal. Most people who buy cookbooks don't actually cook the recipes. It's like they flip through the pages to go on a journey. I think like social media and like ice cream social media lets us do that as well. One of their most eye-catching treats, the legendary cotton candy burrito, a social media and IRL favorite. Ooh, another one, maybe, ooh, look at this, the giant burrito. Oh, the birthday burrito. Yeah, the birthday burrito. I think that should be perfect for today. Hashtag genius. The cotton candy burrito proves that something savory can be the sweetest inspiration. I was having Mexican dinner one night and uh, of course eating burritos and tacos. That's where it gave me the idea, hey, why don't I try to experiment this into a dessert? And long behold, it actually worked. Rosalina was immediately impressed. I was like, man, that's a good idea. Creamberry was one of the first shops in the U.S. to offer the viral treat, but it took a few tries to perfect. As everybody knows, cotton candy is very fragile, and any type of a moisture or it will just ruin the cotton candy. The first step in the process isn't posted on social media. Spinning the cotton candy is one of our trade secrets for our cotton candy burrito. So we, we usually spin it in the back in the kitchen. The couple's young sons also deserve a shout out for their love of cotton candy and its impact on their business. Our kids love cotton candy, so that's why that's the first time that we bring the cotton candy to our shop. So what's more important, how their desserts look or how they taste? Both. Both. <laughs> if customers come in and they're visually attracted to it and they try it and it doesn't taste good, they're not going to come back yeah. and, and get the same dessert. So we eat with our eyes, right? So there's always been effort and consideration to the appearance of food, but the more photographs we can take and the wider they get spread, like with the spread of Instagram and social media, I think there's been even more of a sort of focus on how our food looks on camera. And ice cream is sort of the perfect medium for that. Like you can have a really wild color. You can have this like a really elaborate sundae, or you can have something that's just like really bold and beautiful. And luckily, because it's ice cream, it all still tastes good while looking good at the same time. Other Insta and TikTok worthy finds include their made to order ice cream tacos and wild milkshakes. For Rosalina, the more social interaction, the better. We really love to see the comments, how many likes we got, and then, you know, like a lot of people repost it too. And those comments, good and bad, help the duo refine their creations. Sometimes people say, oh, don't put too much sprinkle candy or whatever it is. And then sometimes we take it like, oh yeah, maybe not too much, it's maybe only a little bit. Yeah, it's very helpful for us yes. as well because then at least we can adjust what, what is necessary and to accommodate the customers. The virtual shares are sweet, but it's even sweeter when followers from around the world get to try Creamberry. We can never get enough of seeing all the smiles when the customers get their orders. Just the, the facial expression that they give us. In an era when we're bombarded with options, the simple joy of heading out for ice cream has withstood the test of time. I think that ice cream shops, spaces, parlors, ice creameries have survived because they've always fulfilled that community space and that family space. It's something that everybody can come together around. And families behind the counter will keep scooping up sweet memories for years to come.
Hey everybody, it's Hoda. Welcome to The Boost right here on Today All Day. We've got a show chock full of good news for you, including a young woman who's blazing her own trail in a male-dominated sports. Plus, one of my very favorite new viral videos sure to make you smile. But we'll get started with a father who's turned his personal grief into a life-changing mission to help other dads. Craig has that story. The first thing that we all have in common is that we have a, a superpower. And our superpower as a dad is our words. Blake Brewer has a story to share with every dad he meets, and it starts with how his life changed in an instant on a family vacation when he was 19. Just me and my dad standing on the beach, we're about to go in, go snorkeling, and he looks down at me with this big smile. And uh, he said, man, I'm glad you're out here with me and we put on the snorkel gear and headed out in the water. And pretty soon we got to a pretty deep spot and the current was really strong and my dad started to struggle. Blake was able to swim his father, Larry Brewer, to shore, but after CPR attempts to save his life were unsuccessful, he was pronounced dead, leaving Blake in a state of shock. I'm back in the condo and my mom appeared in the doorway and she said, I found something in your dad's briefcase that I know he was going to give you on this trip. It was a letter from his dad that he'd been working on for months, and the words in it would change the course of Blake's life. Were there lines that stood out to you that still stand out to you? My dad wrote, as you're being faithful to the Bible, you're often going to find yourself in the minority. But I assure you that in heaven, you'll be in the majority. Love your dear old dad. That line influenced Blake to follow a path into ministry and in 2020 to start an organization called the Legacy Letter Challenge with the goal of helping one million dads write a letter to their child like the one he had received from his dad. But if you could have one line repeating over and over and over again in their mind, what would it be? That would be your legacy line, and I recommend putting it last. At letter writing workshops like this recent one in Northwest Arkansas, Blake shares his mission and teaches dads how to make an impact with their own letters. Jarrett McClellan was one of the dads taking notes. They hear so much of our voice throughout their whole life that it sounds like a clanging bell sometimes. And when we have an opportunity to write a letter, it's out of the everyday norm. What are some of the concepts the dad should keep in mind when they're writing these letters. I love you and it's unconditional. I'm proud of you, not for what you've done. I'm proud of you for who you are and I believe in you. And as dads, like we see the potential that our children could be. Yeah. And it can be frustrating at times when they're like making mistakes, but we're never gonna shame our children into who they could be. Now that he's a father, Blake challenged himself to write a letter to his kids a couple years ago. And when you read them the letter, did they react? Yeah, so I decided to go ahead and read my uh, four-year-old her letter. And, you know, each night I'm you know, trying to read her a book or a princess book or something. And then that night I said, hey, daddy's got something for you. I am boohooing through this letter. And so I get to the end of the letter and I, I look up at her and she looks at me and she says, uh, daddy, can you read me the princess book now? <laughs> <laughs> but the next night, uh, she went up to my wife and she said, last night, daddy read me a message. Can he read me that message again tonight? Wow. So far, Blake has helped thousands of dads write legacy letters to their children through his online and in-person letter writing classes. And he's still hoping to reach and surpass his goal of one million meaningful letters. Yes, it's about the, the son or the daughter that gets the letter. But it seems to me that it's, it's just as much about the dad that's writing the letter. I tell dads as you're writing this letter, like it's for you and your family, but each letter does honor my dad's legacy. If he had known when he had written that letter, the impact that it would have on my life, but now the impact that it's having on so many other people's lives, that's faithful. Yeah. Blake is not the only dad we're spotlighting on the boost today. Peter Alexander shares the remarkable story of Scott Spitnoli after a terrible motorcycle accident. By his side the entire way, his stepson Grant. The two are sharing a lesson on how to stare down a life-altering challenge together. One 
perfect, too. Deep in the woods of Western Maryland. One last one. Make it count. A show of strength. And one more for the road. And a son's nice. love for his dad. That's great, man. <laughs> so, Scott, who's that? Legally, he's my stepson, but he feels like blood to me. Theirs is an unbreakable bond built over years, but cemented by tragedy. Just 19 months ago, Scott Spitnally was cruising down this country road on his motorcycle, a ride that would change everything. I'm rolling down there, not a cloud in the sky. Another driver turned right in front of Scott. He slammed into her windshield, the force of the crash throwing him 80 feet. His Harley destroyed his life hanging by a thread when his son Grant Taylor's phone rang. How did you find out about the accident? I got a call from a random number. He said, hey, look, uh, your dad just got in a motorcycle accident. He's not going to survive. Uh, your mom's hysterical right now. It'd probably be best if you come get her. Scott was airlifted to a trauma center in Baltimore. After surviving tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, receiving a Bronze Star for heroism, this Army veteran was in a coma, his leg shattered and his spinal cord fractured. The next day, doctors called on Grant to make a choice. There's not a good chance that you know, your father's going to live, but that leg needs to go. What's your decision? It was a very hard decision for me and my mom to make just in a blink. It's like, yep, he would, he would be okay with that. Scott was in that medically induced coma for five days. Grant's dad, his hero, was paralyzed from the waist down, told he would never walk again. Suffering does two things. It, it either breaks you down and it kills you or it makes something of you. A lot of people don't realize that growth can come from that, is that you're not buried, you're planted. When you woke up from the medically induced coma, what was the first thing you said to him? All you need is grit and love. How did those words change your life? The words grit grabbed on to me and he hit me deep. Grit is a different perception of life. It's grind, grit, and grace. And being able to have that grit is uh, being able to just take that other step forward. While Scott was away for months of grueling rehab, Grant transformed his parents' home for his family's new reality. But he wasn't finished. Motivated to help his dad heal, Grant left his job as an event coordinator to become a certified personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness. Grant built a gym for his dad in their basement. They had one shared goal, a chance to disprove any doubters. You're never gonna walk again, and I'm like... <laughs> Watch me. Watch me walk. They battled at it together for months. We gotta walk, man. We gotta walk. Then, a breakthrough. It was something as though it was a miracle. He looked at me and his face is red and he's concentrating. I see a tear rolling down his eye and he moved his leg. And on this day with our cameras rolling, Scott nice. did it again. He did it. You know, talking about not getting it done, we got it done. And we continue to get that done. I love you a lot. And they said it. For this father and son, grit was no longer just a word but a motto. He told me, son, grit's all you need. Grit's all you need. Yeah, and I took it to heart. Um, I got a tattooed on me the day that he said it to remind myself every day of what I have to keep on going and my purpose and my reason, and also that we're in this together. By the way, Scott is now pushing to get a matching grit tattoo just like Grant's. We've got more good news stories for you coming up right after the break. Stick around. It's the best time of the morning, time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's the best time of the morning, time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. 
What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to The Boost. Kayla Yakov has made history as the first female to win a race in America's premier motorcycle racing championship series. And get this, she is just 15 years old. Donna Farrison has her story. Over 100 mile per hour speeds. In motorcycle racing, every second counts. Their on clutches are out. And in this sport, where men and women compete together, there is one rising star fearlessly speeding past the rest. 15-year-old Kayla Yako. She has already won over 30 championships. What does it feel like to be a teenage girl thriving in a male-dominated sport? It's intimidating at first, but when you go out and you're able to prove that you deserve to be there is a, is a really, really powerful thing. Kayla began riding motorcycles at just four years old thanks to her father, Dave, who raced for 15 years. My dad's basically been there since day one, and he's the one taking me to the track, coaching me, making sure that I'm training, making sure that I'm motivated. How would you describe Kayla? She's definitely uh, way more mature than most kids her age. Very focused, very determined. Determined indeed. As a pro athlete, Kayla spends weekends traveling from her home in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to Jennings GP in Florida to train. But on the weekdays, she's balancing schoolwork as a student. I think school's very important and I want to try to get my college degree. I think there's definitely been times I've struggled, especially with all of this that goes on. But racing brings a lot of life lessons into it and it allows you to mature in a way that a lot of other kids may not get the opportunity to until they're older. Yako comes to the line, the checkered flag flies, and she wins! The honors student made history last year when she became the first ever female rider to win a race in the U.S. Premier Racing Series, Moto America. How did it feel to win? We had some things early on in the year that, uh, didn't really work out in our favor, but to come back and to prove that we could do it was, was something I really needed. And you feel like all of your hard work has really paid off. Before reaching that moment, Kayla endured multiple injuries, including a torn ACL and a fractured tibia and fibula. But her most difficult challenge was experiencing the devastating loss of her older brother, Dylan, who passed away in December 2021 due to a sudden illness. It was really difficult. Um, it was difficult because you kind of had to take a break from everything. My brother was always my, one of my biggest supporters and to come back and, and try to be stronger, not only for myself, but for him was a huge thing. And I felt like definitely I was protected by him a lot of times this year. There are young girls out there and young guys who look up to her and everything she does. How does that make you feel as a parent to see that she is an inspiration to so many? Oh, it's really cool. It's really cool to see the fans interact with her and the fans actually come to the track to see her. You take a step back and kind of look at the big picture, it is kind of a big deal. Yeah, so it's, it's a cool. huge deal. Yeah. <laughs> what do you hope young girls who watch you take away from this sport? That Girls can be just as competitive in some male-dominated sports, and I think that with hard work and determination and drive and passion, you can go as far as you want to. I kind of want to get on the bike. Can you show me how to ride? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show you some moves. Okay, here we go. Okay, move your butt back, chest down, head up. There's your a basic tuck. All right. Yeah, that's pretty that's good. That's cool. That's not too bad. That's so fun. I can't wait to see you ride now. <laughs> way to go, Kayla. We're going to be cheering for you every step of the way. Meantime, there is a food critic in D.C. blazing her own trail. NBC's Katie Beck has her story. On this Friday night in Washington, D.C., Crystal Fernandez is working. All right. 
a new and unusual gig she's the first in the country to have. Is this your dream job? Yes. I yes. thought so. It is pretty dreamy. She's a food critic, but there are no fancy dinners out around town for Crystal. Do you know what you would like this evening, Zara? <laughs> you provide the food, I'll provide the perspective. Instead, she writes a bi-weekly column about takeout food for the Washington City paper. It's a direct result of the pandemic that changed the way so many of us order food. I got the goods. All right. Yes. Yes. Now, many customers expect fine dining in their living rooms. Now you get a lot more offerings. Exactly. You can go ahead and order that tomahawk steak <laughs> to go. <laughs> Fernandez says she's seen it all when it comes to food, cooking in restaurants for a decade. And when she's not rating food and writing about it, she's blogging new recipes and managing a bakery. We wanted to see her process in action. Thank you. I will take that. I got you. <laughs> is this your office, so this to is, speak? This is my office. This is my studio. <laughs> it's all of that. Yep, my couch is my home. <laughs> Tonight's review, Soul Food with Caribbean Flair from Love Plates. So this was a barbecue halal chicken, and it was grilled. This is going to be delicious. Yep, very tender. Scale of 1 oh, to 10. Yeah. That is... That is an eight and a half. Mm. And that's only because I'm used to my fried cabbage having some like pork in it. The jerk chicken got high customer reviews as well. Hold on now. I take lots of notes. So I take a lot of pictures. When I am in the restaurant, I'll ask questions to the staff. If there's customers around, I'll ask them as well. Even the food's packaging gets a score. You no, know, you're ordering takeout. You don't want the food to, you know, seep through a container, spill into your car. Fernandez says takeout food should first and foremost bring comfort. That's the first test. And the last, leftovers. Go there. I'm going to microwave this for two and a half to three minutes. Oop. This, this tastes just like it did on Friday. And it just tastes immaculate. Digging in to food that's going out. For today, Katie Beck, NBC News, Washington. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. We are back right here on The Boost. Okay, have you ever thought about changing careers? Maybe pursuing a whole new chapter? Well, we found a former Marine who did just that and took action to follow her dreams. Esperanza means hope in Spanish. And throughout my life and some of the challenges that I faced and some of the experiences that I've had, the one thing that has kept me going was hope. I built my dreams on hope. 
Monica Chavez says her dreams were hammered together at an early age with her beloved do-it-yourself dad. As long as I can remember, I was always following my dad around the house, fixing things. I wanted to hold his tools, hold the flashlight, and that ended up really planting the seed for me that I could fix things, that I could build something. If it needed to be fixed, if it needed to be changed, I could do that. She also followed her father's footsteps and joined the Marines after high school. I have a very mechanical brain. I can take things apart and put them back together, so that served me really well. After serving for five years, Monica started a new career as a police dispatcher in San Jose, California. Whether you're on the other line as a 911 call taker or dispatching the call to the police officers out in the field, there's a human element there. Soon enough, she would face her own trauma when her son, Abel, passed away suddenly at age two and a half. It was an extremely difficult time in my life, a traumatic event, but because of my life experiences, the way that I handled it was different from, I think, anybody else because I had resources to be able to process it. Immediately started going to therapy, finding ways to cope. And that's when I found my creativity again. I started blogging, I started writing, I started crocheting, sewing, picked up a tool, and I realized how much I missed that part of myself. My favorite garden hack, using a mailbox in the garden to hold all of your gardening tools. Monica's biggest inspiration was her own home. Very narrow, long staples. And she started sharing her knowledge about DIY design and renovation on social media. And it just grew from there. It went from, this is how you hang up a shelf, to this is how you build a library. The library is one of her biggest projects, a wall of 14-foot shelves made with IKEA bookcases. It's my favorite thing in the entire world. <laughs> she also shares her pitfalls. I didn't think I could do that. And her struggles to try to balance it all, <laughs> now with two little ones, Mauricio, five, and Esperanza, two. Last fall, Monica joined a team to help Dr. Jill Biden do a surprise transformation of a teacher's lounge in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was very much going to be last minute, extreme makeover, and that was so exciting. A few months later, she was asked to help decorate the White House for Christmas. This is the state dining room. Truly a dream, she says. I don't want people to think that they could never do the things that I do, have the things that I have, because I was once that person. I didn't have access to resources. In case you're inspired to do a little DIY in the new year, we asked Monica for some of her best tips. Biggest rookie mistake? Not operating tools safely or wearing the appropriate safety gear. Hardest material to work with? Tile. What you should never overpay for? Furniture, because you can make it or find it secondhand. Best resource? The internet. Let there be light. Monica's next project is transforming a 100-year-old home into a House of Esperanza office and event space. The influence that I want to have with people is empowering them to pick up a power tool and just feel that they can do something themselves. Being able to bring people onto my team and watch them grow into their strengths, it's huge for me. And by the way, she's not the only one in a second act. Madonna. Not that one. Well, she made her mark on the fashion world before becoming an award-winning teacher. And as she turns 70, she is still picking up the pace on the track. I went into fashion because it was in my blood when I was born. Madonna Hanna is a fashionista at heart. As a five-year-old, I would go into my parents' closet and I would reorganize <laughs> their garments by color, <laughs> come home and like, why are my, why are our shoes reorganized by color? <laughs> she turned her childhood passion into a career in fashion marketing and retail. I came in as one of the few African American ex executives in downtown Boston, and Jordan Marsh was one of the largest department stores in New England. My dream at that time was to be a buyer. At that time, African Americans were not going to be promoted to be buyers, just assistant buyers. It was the 70s and it was just one of those things. She then took her skills from the showroom to the classroom, teaching marketing in her industry for over 30 years. I wanted to give the industry that I love, people, 
who on day one, when they walked in, they would be able to contribute. It was her classroom projects that earned Madonna and her students national attention, like their Dare Not to Swear campaign. 500 students signed up to pledge not to swear. We were like flabbergasted, like what? Vanna White sent us a nice photograph that says no swearing, and even the first lady, Laura Bush, reached out to us. And In 2011, at the age of 57, Madonna had a new classroom, this time on the track. Go. As a student. It just came to me that I should run 100 meters. It was such an overwhelming feeling like, where's this coming from? She had no sports experience, but she had speed. Her husband, Steven, a former sprinter and track coach, stepped up to train her, even entering her in the Washington State Senior Games. I won. I won the 50 and I won the 100. 13 state medals, one national medal, and one ruptured Achilles later, Madonna was hooked. It's my life. Just like the seed for fashion, that seed for speed in my DNA. It didn't quit. In 2018, Stephen passed away from vocal cord cancer. He wrote that he wanted me to continue racing, build up my thighs, and to wear red, white, and blue at the National Senior Games. Madonna honored his request and continues to compete. Now with a new coach, Go. a beefed up workout regimen, and adding six more medals. I'm getting older and faster. Oh my gosh. And I'm, you know, beating my times before my ruptured Achilles. This 69 year old is in it for the long run and going for gold. This journey of running was not, it was not my plan. It has taught me that absolutely anything can happen in life. Sending good luck to Madonna. She will be competing at the National Senior Games this summer. When we come back, guys, a morning boost you do not want. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> you doing, Lester? You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star thing. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We comes. begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back and get ready for another video capturing the internet's attention. Watch for a smile and a boost of joy that'll carry you through this day. Check it out. A young skier was waiting for his turn on the slope when a snowboarder, a complete stranger, noticed that that little boy was freezing cold. So he gave him his hand warmer and then he went even further. He's going to give him his neck, his uh, this thing, to put over his helmet. You got something from Snowboard Jesus, my man. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Snowboard Good Jesus. Parent known on the hill of Snowboard Jesus. Just <laughs> happened to be passing by at the right time. He didn't even want his face warmer back. And Aww. I bet that that little young skier is going to pay it forward. 
always leaves me with a smile. And that's what we like to do for you. Thank you for watching The Boost. I'm Hoda Kotb. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Today All Day. Hello, and thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. As we kick off 2023, we are focusing on our finances. The holidays may have left some of us with debt, but here's what you can do now to get your money in order. Santa has come and gone, but now you may be left with a stack of bills you need to slay. While some tried to keep the jingle in their pockets, trying to spend as little money as possible and get as many gifts as possible. Others dash their way into debt. Holiday retail sales expected to hit $960 billion, up at least 6% from last year. A recent survey showed shoppers charged, on average, $663 on their credit cards. Close to a third of those who used a credit card to buy presents last year carried that debt into this holiday season. A lot of us will overeat, overconsume during the holidays. Is that the same when it comes to our financial health? Absolutely. If you're consuming too much alcohol or food during the holidays, you better hit the gym in January. You better have a plan of attack to get those five or 10 extra pounds off. Same thing with your money. Kathy Pareto is a financial planner in Miami. She says discipline can help you whip your pocketbook back into shape, starting with a financially dry January. Really harness your budget that month, cut out all the unnecessary stuff so that if you did rack up some debt in the holiday season, you can focus your income towards debt repayment. Other ways to boost your finances? Pareto suggests a temporary side hustle, selling or returning any unwanted gifts. And when tackling credit card debt, pay down the balance on the card with the highest interest first. She says you can also consider a balance transfer. Just make sure you look for a credit card with a low to zero introductory rate and no fees. If you've dropped the ball when it comes to managing your money, Pareto says the new year marks the perfect time to hit the reset button. While the magic number varies for everyone, she suggests saving at least 10% of your annual salary, allocating money for emergencies and life goals like retirement and sending your kids to college. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. I like the idea of auto doing anything. So auto savings, right? If you have a, a, a target for spending, even go old school, maybe put the cash in an envelope and limit yourself to that. As the year comes to a close, take time to update your tax deductions and adjust your 401k deferrals. In 2023, the contribution limit increases to $22,500. But if you can't afford to put away that much, Pareto says try to save at least what your employer will match. Many will match you dollar for dollar for your annual contributions up to 4 to 6%. If your company doesn't offer a retirement plan, you can invest on your own, contributing to either a traditional or Roth IRA. And even though we just opened presents, it's never too early to start unwrapping plans for Santa's next visit. What can we do now for the coming year? to help us get into a better spending cycle. You have 12 months to be able to really think through how you want to spend, who you want to spend for, and what that might cost. And start to save for that. When you go shopping, you already have it all saved up and you don't have to incur any debt. 2022 ended on a streak of falling gas prices, but that's come to an end. Recent winter storms putting pressure on both prices at the pump and on your home heating bill. Here's Emily Akeda on how to cut those costs. Just days into the new year, and Americans are already feeling the pain at the pump again. What's to blame? Sweeping winter storms shutting down refineries, sharply driving up gas prices for the first time in two months. I think I just got screwed. The national average for a gallon of gas reaching $3.26 today. That's up 13 cents since just last week, with some states seeing much larger increases. There still is time that we could see falling prices by mid and late January, but much of that is also going to be contingent on China's oil consumption as they reopen and could potentially offset price relief. To stretch your dollar further on the road, experts say accelerate gradually and reduce your speed on highways. Avoid leaving your car idling, which can save half a gallon of gas per hour, and use apps to find the cheapest gas stations near you. This is 309 BJ's is 
uh, 280. The recent spike in prices, a one-two punch for families who have dealt with sky-high energy bills, driven in part by Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. Natural gas forecasted to cost 28% more for the average family this winter, and heating oil up 27%, though experts say the new year is beginning to usher in some relief. We're at the close to the peak. Um, I wouldn't say we're at the peak yet. Relief. Business owner Albi Perez says he and his customers have yet to feel, weary from months of wild energy costs. Unfortunately, we have to raise our prices to be able to stay competitive and, and actually keep the doors open. When it comes to saving on home heating, experts say consider investing in better insulation. Look into a space heater. They can be more cost efficient than central heat and install a programmable thermostat to automatically adjust the temperature. So this winter doesn't wash away your savings. Prices of another household staple are rising. Eggs. The average family spends more than $5,000 a year on groceries, and inflation has only driven that hefty bill higher. A year ago, the national average for a dozen of eggs was below $2. Today, shoppers are shelling out two, even three times as much. Here's Emily Akeda. Inflation may be easing overall, but sticker shock at supermarkets is sticking around. They just continually go up. Grocery store staples like flour, bread, and milk surging by double digits in 2022. Chicken, coffee, and fruits and veggies shrinking shoppers' wallets too. This little bag, it's, it's, it's $12 worth of ham, okay? It probably was $5 a year ago. But it's eggs that are serving the biggest blow to budgets. The national average for a dozen, more than doubling in cost from 2021, jumping even more in some states. $8, eight cash, oh my lord. And that's if you can find them at all. Looks like eggs are the new toilet paper, one Twitter user wrote, joining the chorus of shoppers airing their frustrations on social media. Experts say food prices have been impacted by severe weather, labor shortages, and Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. But when it comes to soaring egg prices, another big reason is the deadliest avian flu on record, which is impacting almost every state. So once one bird gets that flu, they all get taken out in short order. To what degree has the avian flu impacted supply? It's reduced supply by 5% year over year. Economists say high egg prices could hang on for months. Bad news for shoppers and businesses alike. Raspberry coconut or lemon lavender? We first met bakery owner Renee Ferris last spring. It's pretty bad. She's stunned the sky-high cost of baking essentials has persisted for this long. First it was the pandemic, now it's inflation. Does it feel like you can't catch your breath? Yes, we're a bakery, so our items are uh, butter, milk, eggs, flour, and those are the things that are, are the highest in price right now. Still, shoppers can find bargains in a few corners of the supermarket. The price of bacon, steaks, and avocados all falling in recent months. For further savings, experts say create a meal routine that will make grocery shopping more predictable for your wallet. While prepackaged veggies and cheese can save you time, opt for whole items to save money. And look for select essentials at dollar stores, like name brand cereals and snack bags. All of it to help stretch your dollar further and beat back inflation. That was NBC's Emily Akeda. Coming up, looking to travel? What's hot this coming year? And later, life or death choices? How to save on your prescription drugs? What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide how's my day going to be. 
We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. If one of your New Year's resolutions is to get out and about more in 2023, Craig Melvin recently spoke to travel expert Mark Elwood to get some fun ideas that won't break the bank. I mean, here's the thing right now. And folks who just traveled over the holidays certainly know this to be true. Hotels are up. Air travel's up. Everything seems to be more expensive when it comes to travel. Is that a trend that we can expect to continue in 2023? It is, but I would say I think I'm going to follow the rule rule, if I can say that, okay. and say if you're staying at a hotel and you're worried about the price, especially an independent hotel, email them and say, hey, I'd love to make a booking right now. Can you work with me on the price? And you'd be surprised how a little polite negotiation yeah. saying, look, if you work with me on this, I'll give you my business. They really, could, they really could work with you on that. Never heard that. So you can actually call the front desk and say, we want to come. Can you, give us a, can you give us a deal? Yeah, what kind of deal could you work? But be okay. nice about it. Be ni yes, always. Always. You know? So let's talk about some of these new travel trips yep. because a few of these actually surprised me. Okay. Um, my wife has talked about this first one, perhaps unsurprisingly. <laughs> I was going to say. We're talking about solo female travel. So the Solo Female Travelers Club, which sort of does what it says on the tin, yeah. it surveyed 5,000 women and found that about two-thirds of them wanted to go do a an independent female group trip. So in other words, not single women, but women who want to travel singly like your wife, saying, hey, I feel like traveling with my girlfriends, bit of me time. That's a big, big new trend. What kind of options are we talking about here? So Lolo Pass is really interesting. About 18 months old. I call it a postal. It's like a posh hostel. A postal. A postal. Okay. Um, in Portland, uh, Oregon. Great on the east side, right? You know, great food and beverage. But what's really important is there's female areas. So it's very much a gender divided you can choose to be in an all female dorm room oh. four friends four beds together really like sleepaway camp but as a grown up okay and I'm, we're looking at great prices here you know 125 for a private room 35 for a bed all right i'm not eligible for this one but no. i am eligible for this next one which i i think is pretty cool we're talking about retro travel so booking.com surveyed uh people about their plans for 2023 and basically everybody said I want to go on a nostalgic trip that takes in all American classic movie locations. Yeah. So I've got somewhere that's a classic Olympic location. Where? Which is Lake Placid. Oh, we love Lake Placid. And we love Eastwind. This is an amazing hotel from the 1950s, a retro motor lodge. If Happy Days was a hotel, it would be Eastwind. It starts at 200 bucks a night, and you can enjoy all of those classic Olympic details. The museum there's just been redone. All of the winter sports that meant it was an Olympic yeah. destination, you can do them. It's, and we've, we've actually, we haven't been to that place, but we've been to Lake Placid a number of times. Love Lake Placid. Charming. Really um, charming. This is something that my family and I, we've actually talked about doing this year. Camping. Well, no. Glamping. I was going to say, they're not, gla not camping. Right. Glamping. Glamping. Yes. This is all about our return to the outdoors. During the pandemic, travel really embraced the chance to be in the fresh air, individual, out in nature. And we're seeing people really still want to do that. But if you're like you and me, yeah. we've got a, a few creature comforts. We'd like to rough it. We don't want to rough it too much. I mean, I want a bathroom, all of that. Right. So, Hatopia is this gorgeous French camping company. I call it pret a -Compe rather than pret a -Porte. This is ready to camp. These hut, these tents are yeah. put up. Look, at, I mean, look at this. They're put up in locations where they will not impact the environment. They don't cut trees down to put them up. If they move from the location within, within six months, 80% of the, of the land looks like virgin land. There's, there's a handful of them around the country, yeah. you can see. They're also opening in Northern California and Florida, and it starts at 85 bucks a That's night. a deal. Right? That's a deal. Would okay. that, can you, maybe? Hotopia? Hotopia. Okay. Or we say with the French accent, Hotopia. <laughs> Family reunions making quite the comeback. This is all about two trends coming together. During the pandemic, obviously, we didn't travel in the way we were used to traveling. No. And we also have, everyone has family maybe far flung in the country, even overseas, also harder to see. So we're seeing people put that together and say, I'll meet the grandparents in the Caribbean. I'll bring my cousin over from Jamaica. Yeah. I'm saying Salt Lake is a great place to, to convene because it's a Delta hub. And there are almost 100 non-stop flights from Salt Lake on Delta around the country.
Did you know that? I did, I did, only because we were in Salt Lake City last year, yeah. So you're like, yeah, I get this. So I recommend Salt Lake, also you've got Park City, you've got great winter sports, and you've also got an amazing new hotel with, stu they're called Studio Commons Rooms. You put them together, yeah. basically bring your own wing, starts at 189. Got about 30 seconds left. Ah. Cruising is back. It is back, it is different. Cruising didn't happen as much during the pandemic, of course. They reconfigured themselves and thought, what does cruising mean today? They thought about history, they thought about engagement. Holland America starts at $5.79 per person per room per trip. You're getting great engagement with places like Juneau in Alaska, one of the places that Holland America started. The boats themselves have Dutch high teas, and even better, there's a throwback happy hour. It could be 75 cents for your drink. 75 cents? 75 cents. Okay. Mark Elwood, thank you as always, Mark. Pleasure. Always good to have you. Thank you, thank Happy you. Happy travels. Thank you to Craig and Mark there. Still to come, they are not the usual suspects. The different memberships you may already have, they could help you save money. Plus, as car prices go up, so do car thefts. What you need to know to make it harder for thieves to steal your set of wheels. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. mornings they're full of possibility and how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day we feel like we're right there with you because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours how many of you were up there at least like 11 how real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Aunt Lester. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. With car prices on the rise, experts are warning we will be seeing the highest rate of car thefts in more than a decade. But there are some simple things you can do to make it harder for thieves to steal your set of wheels. <laughs> Caught on camera, a joyride in a stolen car in Milwaukee. These criminals in Chicago stealing 10 luxury cars right from a dealership. In Washington, D.C., this suspect captured right on the car's dash cam. He's not car. He's losing it. And in Glendale, Wisconsin, thieves lead police on a dangerous chase through the streets off road. Lost the tire. Finally, coming to an end. Scenes like these playing out coast to coast with thieves even taking cars right from driveways. Already in 2022, 745,000 cars stolen, with experts predicting this year we'll see the most car thefts in 14 years. Since 2008, we have not seen numbers like this. We are going to approach 1.1 million cars stolen, and that's a 24% increase during the COVID-19 pandemic. David Glowey is the president and CEO of the National Insurance Crime Bureau. He says last year, Bakersfield, California, Denver, Colorado, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Portland, Oregon had the highest rates of car thefts, with Kia and Hyundai the most popular cars targeted by thieves. The price of used cars and car parts are up astronomically. Used cars are up almost 40 percent. The value is what's driving the criminal enterprises. They're worth a lot of money. To learn how to make it harder for thieves to steal your car, I team up with Mike Zapraconi, former NYPD detective and now president of Squad Security. So Mike, here's the thing. How are these thieves making off with so many people's cars these days? You no, know, Vicky, it's because we're lazy. Mm -hmm. We leave the key inside, we leave the fob inside. 
always take it with you, even okay. if it's for a second. If you have to run back in the house, remember, let's not make it easy for them. Take the key, lock your door. Police warn luxury cars with folding mirrors are especially vulnerable. When the mirrors are open like this, it usually means the car is open and your key fob might be inside the key car. Oh. So by closing them, uh -huh. what you're doing is you're telling the bad guys, this car's locked and there's no fob in there. And they're going to just walk away and go to another car, an easier target. If you have a garage, put your car, not your stuff, in it. You pull into your garage, what's the first thing you should do? Close the door. Close the door, wait till you hear the girl go down, mm -hmm. and you see the door down, then you can turn off your car and exit your vehicle. Why do you want your garage door to be closed before you get out? So nobody can run in behind you, okay? And then, then all of a sudden, if someone gets in behind you, now they have a shot of taking your car, taking your phone, taking everything, possibly even burglarizing your house. What's your advice for the code when it comes to your garage keypad? Be creative. Don't use one, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero. Don't use your address. Come up with something new and different. As for parking in the driveway? I like to pull in those first. Okay. Every second counts. It takes longer to back it out than to pull out. What about these GPS tags? Tile makes one, Apple makes one, Samsung too. Do you think you should put one of these in the car? I think it's a great idea. Any advantage we can. But always keep in mind, the police know how to do their job. Let them track these, not you personally. And hide the tracker where a thief won't look. Security cameras can be a good way to keep your property safe, so consider installing one and park your car in its field of view. What if your only option is to park your car on the street? Well, you want to park as close as you can to the other vehicle, mm -hmm. and you want to turn your wheels to the curb, so it makes it more difficult for them to tow your car away. Thieves are actually towing people's cars no, away? Without a doubt, of course they are. Get this, thieves can even strike while you're driving. It's called a, a bump and rob. Okay, where someone's gonna come up in front of you, stage a fake accident, hmm. you're gonna run into them, and then someone may come up behind you. But the whole purpose is to get you out of the car so someone could jump in and take your car. They'll steal your car when in you a get second. Out. That's right. So you, you need to know don't ever get out of the car. Okay. Make sure your doors are locked, call 911, okay? Wait for the police to come. The National Insurance Crime Bureau says most insurance plans won't cover you if your car gets stolen. They recommend adding what's called comprehensive coverage, which costs anywhere from about $100 to $300 more a year. So to come, ways to save on your prescriptions and unusual ways to find everyday discounts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe this is what it looks and feels the, latest the bigger piece of the puzzle we comes. begin tonight with breaking news how much water ultimately will be forced inland whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens wherever you are NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> You're on Western. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> love you too. NBC News, streaming free now. At the start of a new year, healthcare costs can be staggering as deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums reset. But this year, there are other stressors as well. So how can you save on your prescriptions? Here's a step-by-step -step guide. It's all too common. Sticker shock at the pharmacy. It's $250 a month. My copayment was $660. $17,000. $710 for a milliliter. As the new year gets underway, it can be especially shocking as deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums reset and insurance plans update their drug coverage. You could be left footing the bill. At the beginning of each year, everybody's plan changes. Consumer Reports' Lisa Gill says the best way to combat those sudden price hikes starts with a phone call and a few key questions. Give your 
insurance company a call and find out how well is this drug covered? Is it covered at another pharmacy, a preferred pharmacy at a lower cost? Turns out there are a lot of options. If you have a high deductible or a high pharmacy copay and you take mostly generic medicines, there are multiple discount pharmacies that can help you pay less without using your insurance. Some, like Costco, Walgreens, and Scripco, offer discounted meds for customers who pay a membership fee. Others, like GoodRx and Single Care, help find coupons that you can use at other pharmacies. Then there are the online pharmacies that take insurance, like Blink Health, and the ones that typically don't, like Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drug Company. We called Walgreens to see how their discount membership compares when it comes to the most common generic in the U.S. Okay, bye-bye. So I just got off the phone with Walgreens, and they wanted to charge me $94 for a one-month supply of a common cholesterol medication, the generic. But if I joined their membership program for $20, I could get that drug for $15 a month. Get this, when I went online to the Mark Cuban Cost Plus Drug Company website, I found I could get a 90-day supply for under five bucks. Finding savings for brand name medications is a little different. If you have insurance through your employer, go directly to the drug manufacturer's website and look for something called a copay coupon, or in this case, it's called a savings card. That could mean a big discount for you. If you're on Medicare or uninsured, you should still call the drug maker directly and ask about any assistance programs. Over time, those programs have expanded quite dramatically mm -hmm. to the point that you can have insurance, a moderate income, and still receive really dramatic discounts or even free medication. The website needymeds.org has info on both of these types of prescription cost assistance plans for a huge variety of brand name drugs. But Gil says it's still important to check in with your insurance. You don't want to be surprised later in the year when you find out that you never met that deductible. If you've tried everything and still can't pay, Gil says your best resource might be local independent pharmacies. Not only will they negotiate, they will also often help you find copay programs or patient assistance programs to lower those drug costs. We are all looking for ways to save and sometimes the shortcuts are right in front of us, from signing up for various memberships to apps that give you access to Oscar-winning content for free. We found some really simple and surprising ways to put a few dollars back into your wallet. With rising costs on essential needs. Inflation is awful. Everything costs so much. It's time to get smart about saving. We're all trying to figure out ways to save money um, and to be super impactful with our spend especially as the holidays approach. And the discounts are out there. A simple library card can actually save you from hefty streaming subscriptions. Apps like Overdrive, Hoopla, and Canopy offer catalogs of content for free. And one surprising trend now among young people, signing up for benefits from the AARP. Contrary to popular belief, you can be any age to join AARP. And the benefits are awesome. The Wall Street Journal finding 20-somethings as new card carriers in an effort to snag discounts amid inflation, showing it's not just for the 50 and older crowd. In my head, it was always something for senior citizens. 28-year-old Marissa Schwartz says she learned a lot about AARP benefits through TikTok and couldn't help but join in on the savings and even convinced her parents to do the same. In a similar fashion, a AAA membership can also land you deals from food, entertainment, and travel, while wholesale clubs are a popular way to save in bulk. I paid about $200. Um, I think there's way more than $200 worth in this basket. I mean, it's just crazy how expensive it all is, and it really, it just adds up. Maximize your wholesale membership by sharing with another person to cut costs. Alone, Costco's memberships can run $60 a year, $120 if you're looking at the executive level, while Sam's Club is $50 per year, $110 for its Plus membership. And before you sign up, check out sites like Groupon, Retail Me Not, and Slick Deals for discounts on the membership itself. I think people love a deal. It's the idea that the buy one, get one, the 10% off, the 15% off, you really feel like you're gaming the system. But buyer beware of signing up for too many costly memberships. Experts suggest narrowing down the necessities first to determine which ones will be the most impactful and avoid getting overrun by the club fees. You have to be really thoughtful with these memberships because if you're going to spend money to join a membership, then you need to really make sure it's worth it on the back end. 
That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Nguyen. You scream, I, okay, I'm gonna stop right there because I know you know how it goes. We are here at New York City's legendary Lexington candy shop. Happens to be my neighborhood luncheonette. And there was a time when soda fountains and diners like this were all over New York City and all over the country. Whether it's a cone, a sundae, or mm, an ice cream float. I gotta tell you, there's nothing that brings back memories like places like these. Today, we're getting the scoop and diving into the history of America's beloved sweet shops. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're gonna learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. It's no coincidence that here at the Lexington Candy Shop, one of New York City's most iconic soda fountains, they serve ice cream from the city of brotherly love. It's Bassett's, the oldest ice cream company in America. In fact, Philadelphia is home to many early ice cream innovations. And at the Franklin Fountain, we've got two brothers who have recreated a turn-of-the-century fountain that celebrates Philadelphia's unique contribution to American ice cream history. We're very proud to be called Soda Jerks. In the heyday of soda fountains, being called a jerk was a good thing. A soda jerk is someone that jerks the handle on the soda fountain. We are the Burley Brothers. I'm Ryan. And I'm Eric Burley. Welcome. Come on in. Stepping into the Franklin Fountain is like time traveling to a bygone era. I've always felt a kinship for the turn of the century. It just feels like maybe I was there in a past life. The Burley family originally purchasing this historic property in 2002, but they weren't sure what to do with the storefront until inspiration struck. The building is really what inspired us uh, to do what we do here. It was built around 1899, and the original tin ceiling remains as well as the penny tile floor. So we really thought that a soda fountain kind of looked right for the space. There's certainly a sense of awe and wonder, sort of a, a transport through the time machine when you walk in the door, and that was really intentional. The brothers working for nearly two years to restore the space. It is not for the faint of heart to restore any old building. It's a labor of love. And frankly, we wouldn't have it any other way. It's part of the handmade nature of everything that we do here. The kitchen itself was a preservation element, restoring the motor on the buttercream machine, fixing the belts. You know, the restoration of the building wasn't just the facade, but it's also the back of house spaces. They also embarked on a mission to recreate an authentic fountain experience. We took a number of road trips, in part to learn about the ice cream business, and then we would always pair soda fountain tours with those. So visiting places in the American South, going down to New Orleans, going to Savannah, seeing these old fashioned soda fountain places, interviewing the soda jerks, the pharmacists, and really learning the culture of the soda fountain was a big part of our research. Today, while we may take the simple pleasure of eating an ice cream cone for granted, that wasn't always the case. 
I'm Sarah Lohman. I'm a food historian, author, and ice cream expert. Let's go back to when ice cream was a luxury, largely available to only the richest of Americans. We don't think of these as expensive ingredients today, but ice and sugar historically were very rare, and so only the wealthiest people could afford them. So it was usually made in the home, and by home I mean a large grand estate, by people who had servants, and then eventually people who owned other people. We're talking about the enslaved. So you also needed that literal manpower to make it. That all begins to change in the 19th century as technology and supplies change. Traditionally, European ice cream was made with a custard base that included eggs. But a simpler style emerged in Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is the most important city to ice cream history, maybe Pennsylvania as a whole, because we had the invention of Philadelphia-style ice cream by a black man. Augustus Jackson, a black man who was a White House chef working under multiple presidents, including Andrew Jackson, is credited with advancing a new type of ice cream and method. And he came up with an ice cream base that didn't use eggs, but was just as like creamy and luscious, but could be made with less ingredients, made quicker, and he supposedly had really, really tasty flavors too. A free man. He later moved back to his native Philadelphia to start his own business. So he made it and sold it, but then he also sold it to other ice cream shops too, and became very famous and very wealthy for this new style of ice cream. Jackson's contributions made ice cream more widely available to more consumers. Philadelphia is also home to the oldest ice cream company in America, Bassett's. I'm Alex Bassett Strange, was my great, great, great grandfather that started this company all the way back in 1861. We're proud to be here today. Bassett's was the first merchant to sign a lease in Philadelphia's historic Reading Terminal Market. And the family is still there serving up scoops today. Bassett's ice cream is a 16.5% butterfat ice cream, and it's what's called a Philadelphia style, which means that it's made without any egg yolk. Innovations to ice cream production, allowing more shops like Bassett's to open up in the early 1900s, and that ushered in a new type of meeting place where folks could socialize. And then we also had ice cream saloons. Now, the name there is key, saloon, yeah, means bar. And at this time, bars were places where only men could go, but ice cream saloons were one of the first public spaces that was socially acceptable for women to go to. So to have a public space was really meaningful to women. To have a space where you felt free, to have a space where you could safely flirt. Soda fountains and parlors became even more popular and almost necessary during the 1920s. When prohibition hits and we ban the sale of alcohol, then there's really a need for these public spaces for people to gather and socialize outside of the home. And as we move into the soda fountain era, we have a lot of creativity in adding ice cream to different flavors of soda and making these incredible concoctions and sundaes. If you were a soda jerk at the turn of the century, you were kind of a local celebrity. Today, the jerks in charge at Franklin Fountain are serving up nostalgia along with their vintage creations. It's one of our newer uh, soda syrups. It's uh, made with real watermelon fruit. Come over here to our 1905 soda fountain. Yeah. Mm, that is really good. Uh, you know, I don't want to mess with that flavor too much, so I'll just go with vanilla. Uh, vanilla ice cream just rounds everything out nice, plays nice at the playground. And the bean specks on the vanilla show that it's made with real vanilla, not vanillin. And that's an old Philadelphia tradition of having bean specks in their vanilla ice cream. Franklin Fountain's menu focuses on classics, but they also bring back long forgotten flavors. Summer hits like black walnut that tend to be kind of bitter, but mixed with enough sweetness can be really unique and good. Other flavors like pawpaws, which are our native fruit here in North America. While others misses. Uh, a flavor that kind of bombed here, uh, as an example, I'll tell you, it was orange pineapple. Like we really wanted to bring back orange pineapple as an ice cream, which was really popular at the turn of the century. But the Burleys aren't just passionate about their flavors. They are working to keep a tasty tradition alive. 
Our business has really enabled the preservation of a couple of historic buildings here on the block. And we hope that the, the fountain and the institution of the soda fountain continues and you know, can be passed to succeeding generations of uh, soda jerks. Coming up, I visit a family-owned ice cream shop in Harlem and get a sweet surprise. NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning, time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, I'm It's the best time of the morning. Time for my pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Finish this sentence. Ice cream is... Love. Ice cream is... Not easy to make. <laughs> <laughs> and see. We're up here in Harlem where the forecast is partly cloudy with a 100% chance of sprinkles. Why? Because we're outside Sugar Hill Creamery where they're bringing the community together one scoop at a time. Let's check it out. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Hi, it's nice to meet you. you? you? That's Nick and Petrushka Larson, husband and wife, and parents to Isla, Zadie, and Nico. So let's talk ice cream. They're also the owners of Harlem's Sugar Hill Creamery, which the couple opened in their beloved neighborhood in 2017. We're gonna give you the scoop, Al. Bam! For the couple, that bam moment came after meeting up with friends in DC for some premium scoops. We had small batch delicious ice cream, and that is when it hit us that this was not an experience that we could have in our own neighborhood. The realization that they couldn't do this in Harlem was the beginning of their sweet journey. When Nick and I started dating, he always said he wanted to own a food establishment of some sort. And then this, you know, moment in life kind of presented the opportunity. Patricia oversees the shop's marketing and business, while Nick, well, he develops their artisanal flavors, often looking to the neighborhood for inspiration. The great thing about having a small shop, you see in real time, oh yeah, they don't like this, <laughs> right? And, and our, you know, and our friends from Harlem, they are not shy to be like, yo, no, no, this is no yeah. good. <laughs> so your flavors are nods to Harlem. Not to Harlem, not to our respective cultures as well. So my, I'm black, African American, and from the Caribbean. And Nick is from the Midwest and was raised on a farm. We're channeling Harlem, we're channeling childhood memories, we're channeling the way that we were raised, what we were eating. I think this is the best uh, example of channeling our neighborhood. So we have a, a, a flavor called Cafe Tuba. And where the first location is, it's like a few blocks from Little Senegal. The flavor Cafe Tuba uses coffee from Senegal. We incorporate peanut brittle and the lean pepper brownies. Mm. So it's a bit of a twist on a classic, which we like to say we make, you know, twists on classics and then all their flavors that you wouldn't expect. Many features of the scoop shop pay homage to Harlem, starting with the name. Where we're sitting right now is a neighborhood that is adjacent to Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill is a neighborhood in Harlem that at the turn of the 20th century was the, the place where a, upwardly mobile black people resided and, and came to, right? It was also the home of the Harlem Renaissance too. Many artists, activists were living here. You know, you talk about the history and homages to this neighborhood. Uh, was there some thoughts about the, that historic uh, ice cream shop, Bumford's? Yes. 
Just before opening Sugar Hill, Patricia learned about an iconic Harlem institution, Tomford's. Small group of octogenarian Harlemites that just happened to be at this conference, and they were like, "Hey, she's opening an ice cream shop. This is crazy!" And they're like, "Oh my gosh, it'll, it's like Tomford." Tomford's was in business from 1903 to 1983, located in the heart of Harlem at 125th and St. Nicholas. Unlike many early soda fountains, it catered to black patrons, providing much more than food and ice cream. It was the place that people went after, you know, church uh, on a date. And we didn't know about it when we decided to open the shop, but after we learned about it, before we opened the shop, we definitely channeled the, the history and spirit of that place here. Sugar Hill's motto, the sweet life is a love affair between community and food. And it also has a historical meaning. The sweet life is also you know, a reference to the great migration. You know, when people moved to Sugar Hill, they were looking forward to sweet life. We wanted to give our neighbors a little bit of sweet life as well, right? Nick and Petrushka are hopeful that their spot will become the place for making family memories down the line. Later down the line is to hear stories like people talking about Tomford's or talking about what, you know, what we meant to them, right? To be a place where somebody could come in and say, my parents met here. What an honor. And I, think, I don't think that we take our role as, you know, the people who created this company lightly. Like, it is such an honor to be able to serve our neighbors and to also be a place that they continue to come back to. I think that a lot of us have really fond memories of going with our family um, and having ice cream on a hot summer day, or like rolling past a rural ice cream stand and it's just like packed with little league kids. Or when you live in a city, you've got your local ice cream place that you can walk to and the whole neighborhood is there. And as for the future of Sugar Hill Creamery? With, with three kids, uh, Nick, are, are you hoping that out of those three, one of them is going to carry on the tradition? It's a tricky question. Yes, I would, but you know, I'm not going to pressure them. At the very least, we need them to work here during exactly. high school. Exactly. Okay? Like, like, like. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You'll get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> love you too. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, OK? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love um, yeah. <laughs> no stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. It's time for Sunday school. Say amen, say hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> My Sunday school teachers at Harlem Sugar Hill Creamery kicked off my lesson with a special treat, a one-of-a-kind flavor made just for me. You should learn to scoop with your own, uh, my own flavor. Your own flavor. My own flavor. Yeah. Wow. All of the ice cream served at Sugar Hill Creamery is small batch, each flavor taking two days from start to finish. The difference between a small batch and large batch is one is a freezer. These machines allow more experimentation with mix-ins. The reason why it's homemade and why it's better to use a small batch, for example, is 
you have freedom to do whatever the hell you want. You're not beholden to what can fit into a automated machine that, like for example, can't put a particular like sauce in it because it'll be too thick or it'll jam something, you know, things like that. And now, back to Sunday school. So what's my flavor? So your flavor, so we've heard around the way uh -huh. that, you, uh, that you're, a friend, you're a fan of cookies and cream. I am. Also, you like sweet potato pie. So I do. Okay, so this is a combination. And pecans. Of, well, right? the pecan element is yeah. a part of the sweet potato pie. But, but yeah. yes. I can tell you guys are married. No! <laughs> For my signature flavor, Nick started with a sweet cream base, then adding Nilla wafers. Blended in, made a uh, graham cracker pie crust or pecan, Ooh. Uh, roast sweet potatoes, cook it uh, down with, basically it's a holiday IPA, mm -hmm. and uh, poured the beer in it, blend it up, and then made it like a custard with, uh, with eggs. Wow, a lot goes into that. A lot goes into it. And a lot goes into forming the perfect scoop. But picture perfect scoops wouldn't be the same without one very important invention. The ice cream scoop was invented by a black man. Alfred Crawley holds a patent for the ice cream mold and disher. And that's the scoop that's like, it has a little handle that you squeeze and the thing scrapes and the ice cream plops out. Uh, he invented that in 1897 and sort of revolutionized ice cream culture. So the side here is to form it. The tip is to like kind of scrape it, right? So if you're like just learning, the best way is just a little bit at the top, like that. Sides and boom. And you, you form it with the side. Oh, so you're forming the ball. The ball, the yeah, exactly. All right, voila. Ta-da. Right. So the cup, got a little rinse. Rinse. Okay, so you, you start. You can well, also uh, grab out the sides there too because oh, it's a little, little softer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a sad yeah. scoop. No, no, oh, look, now good. you're going to form oh, it. Oh, now it's forming. Now you're. Mm -hmm. Now it's forming. Oh, yep, look, at, look that at that now. Oh, See? hey, now we're talking. There it is. Wow. There it is. Good. Hey, now. All right, let's taste. All, All right. right, time to taste. The Al Roker. Cheers. Well, actually. Oh, we also have a special name for it. Oh, what's that? It's uh, your neck of the woods. Oh, I like you get it. <laughs> wow. And this, this is, is great. Yeah. Like all Sugar Hill flavors, there's an art to naming the ice cream. For example, their best-selling blueberry cheesecake, well, it's named for Petrushka. So this is uh, named after my wife, who is the chairperson of the board. She's the boss. This is the boss flavor. You're smart man. <laughs> this is the this is the chief. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. My work here is done. Coming up, a whimsical creamery in Las Vegas known for its colorful creations. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning, time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You get one beautiful Someday. life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's the best time of the morning. Time for our pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You know the old saying, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, especially when it comes to a hot spot that's known for creating really cool desserts, Creamberry. These folks are recreating the ice cream parlor experience for a whole new generation of ice cream fans. And whether that's in person or via social media posts. Selfie anyone? 
I've seen some kids who can kill the burrito by themselves. Most adults, it's funny, they would share. <laughs> In Las Vegas, a few miles off the strip, is the flashy, fabulous, and insta-famous ice cream shop, Creamberry, opened in 2016 by husband and wife team Danny and Rosalina C., hoping to create a one-stop dessert cafe. We set on a mission to bring in a wide variety of crazy, innovative desserts into one place. For Danny, it was a dream come true. I've always had a sweet tooth when I was younger, and I've always loved ice cream. Rosalina, not so much right away. She favored traditional icy desserts from her native Indonesia, not American ice cream. We love sweet stuff, but we don't uh, really love like ice cream, ice cream, but more to like shave ice. I said, why don't we bring our Indonesia dessert to our menu? And just like that, Creamberry started offering shaved ice. So we have the secret ingredients, which is the sauce, the red one, that make it very good with the condensed milk, with everything fruit on top for the shave ice, and then it's a good combination. Danny's focus was on the full menu, adding unique treats from around the world to Creamberry, desserts like Thai rolled ice cream and Filipino hala halo. Recognizing the power of social media, Rosalina began posting photos and videos of their decadent creations to Instagram, and then later to TikTok. It's a practice that keeps modern ice cream parlors relevant, according to food historian Sarah Lohman. I think social media is important because, I mean, there's, there's people out there who are following ice cream places that maybe, maybe they'll go to, maybe they'll never go to, but it's like the visual appeal. Most people who buy cookbooks don't actually cook the recipes. It's like they flip through the pages to go on a journey. I think like social media and like ice cream social media lets us do that as well. One of their most eye-catching treats, the legendary cotton candy burrito, a social media and IRL favorite. Ooh, another one, maybe, ooh, look at this, the giant burrito. Oh, the birthday burrito. It. Yeah, the birthday burrito. I think that should be perfect for today. Hashtag genius. The cotton candy burrito proves that something savory can be the sweetest inspiration. I was having Mexican dinner one night and uh, of course eating burritos and tacos. That's where it gave me the idea, hey, why don't I try to experiment this into a dessert? And long behold, it actually worked. Rosalina was immediately impressed. I was like, man, that's a good idea. Creamberry was one of the first shops in the U.S. to offer the viral treat, but it took a few tries to perfect. As everybody knows, cotton candy is very fragile, and any type of a moisture or it would just ruin the cotton candy. The first step in the process isn't posted on social media. Spinning the cotton candy is one of our trade secrets for our cotton candy burrito. So we, we usually spin it in the back in the kitchen. The couple's young sons also deserve a shout out for their love of cotton candy and its impact on their business. Our kids love cotton candy, so that's why that's the first time that we bring the cotton candy to our shop. So what's more important, how their desserts look or how they taste? Both. Both. <laughs> if customers come in and they're visually attracted to it and they try it and it doesn't taste good, they're not going to come back yeah. and, and get the same dessert. So we eat with our eyes, right? So there's always been effort and consideration to the appearance of food, but the more photographs we can take and the wider they get spread, like with the spread of Instagram and social media, I think there's been even more of a sort of focus on how our food looks on camera. And ice cream is sort of the perfect medium for that. Like you can have a really wild color. You can have this like a really elaborate sundae, or you can have something that's just like really bold and beautiful. And luckily, because it's ice cream, it all still tastes good while looking good at the same time. Other Insta and TikTok worthy finds include their made to order ice cream tacos and wild milkshakes. For Rosalina, the more social interaction, the better. We really love to see the comments, how many likes we got, and then, you know, like, a lot of people repost it too. And those comments, good and bad, help the duo refine their creations. 
sometimes people say, oh, don't put too much sprinkle candy or whatever it is. And then sometimes we take it like, oh yeah, maybe not too much, it's maybe only a little bit. Yeah, it's very helpful for us yes. as well because then at least we can adjust what, what is necessary and to accommodate the customers. The virtual shares are sweet, but it's even sweeter when followers from around the world get to try Greenberry. We can never get enough of seeing all the smiles when the customers get their orders. Just the, the facial expression that they give us. In an era when we're bombarded with options, the simple joy of heading out for ice cream has withstood the test of time. I think that ice cream shops, spaces, parlors, ice creameries have survived because they've always fulfilled that community space and that family space. It's something that everybody can come together around. And families behind the counter will keep scooping up sweet memories for years to come. Welcome to The Boost. We've got a dose of good news, positive vibes all coming your way. We're going to start with the growing excitement for Super Bowl 57. The big game's this weekend. It already has a star. You know her name, Donna Kelsey. She's the mom making history with two sons facing off against each other. Take a look. The Philadelphia Eagles are going back to the Super Bowl. And the Kansas City Chiefs have won it. For Donna Kelsey, Super Bowl 57 is about much more than which team hoists the Lombardi Trophy. She will make history as the first mom to have two sons face off on the NFL's biggest stage. My mom can't lose. I'll just leave it at that. Jason Kelsey, an all-pro center for the Eagles, and younger brother Travis, the all-pro tight end for the Chiefs, are both stars for their respective teams. Now, the brothers are ready to take that sibling rivalry to the next level. Jason joking with reporters before the Chiefs game Sunday. Win or lose, I'm done being a Chiefs fan in three hours. But even leading up to one of the biggest games of their careers, both brothers are known for supporting each other. You won't see me talking too much trash because of how much respect and how much uh, I love uh, I love my brother. But um, it's just it's definitely going to be a it's going to be an emotional game. That's for sure. Donna always trying to be in two places at once, proudly sporting a split Eagles Chiefs jersey. She was watching Jason's game in person at the Eagles Lincoln Financial Field before flipping over to Travis's Chiefs game. But she knows exactly where she's headed in just under two weeks. The NFL calling the upcoming game the Kelsey Bowl, joining millions of football fans wondering, who's she rooting for? The brothers, who both play offense, won't actually take the field at the same time, but the game is sure to be a nail-biter for their parents, Donna and Ed, who will be watching to see which of their sons will claim their second Super Bowl ring. Well, how fun is this? We've got Donna Kelsey with us this morning. Let's just get it out of the way. Are you rooting for any particular team in the Super Bowl? Absolutely, the offense. <laughs> uh, Every well, time somebody has the ball. <laughs> yeah, well said, Mom, since both of your boys play offense. Well, how does it feel to be you right now? You're the only mother ever to have two sons in the Super Bowl facing each other. Well, you knew it was going to happen eventually to somebody because there are so many brothers in the NFL right now that are playing at a very high level. It just you know, happened to be that we were the lucky ones first. So I think it's probably going to be more and more prominent. I mean, for you as, as a mom, you've spent just, I would imagine, countless hours watching your sons play football growing up. And here they are at the apex of it uh, in less than two weeks. Is this a dream come true for you or are you going to be nervous as, as, as all get out? Yeah. No, the, I, I'm a true fan of football. This is going to be so awesome. They've already got the first win under their belts, so this is going to be just pure joy. I mean, we're going to really enjoy this, um, have a great time. Obviously, there's going to be somebody that's going to go home heartbroken, but uh, they won't have the you know bragging rights at the Thanksgiving table. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is going to be an awesome event, and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, tell us about these boys of yours. I mean, do they have that sibling rivalry? Are they competitive at all? <laughs> Oh, geez. Um, 
Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of fights, a lot of, you know, I mean, it was just everything was a competition. It was a competition to see who could get to the table first, who could get in the front seat of the car. This is just it's just typical sibling rivalry. They egged each other on. Travis was always trying to, you know, um, get at his older brother to pay attention to him. So, you know, there were a lot of fights. So it's just that's the way boys are. How do, how do you think you're going to do on Super Bowl Sunday? when you're there in the stands I'll just be so elated probably some tears yeah and uh, just will be a very very emotional moment what do you tell that son uh, who, who doesn't win on, on Sunday what do you what do you say to him how do you console him there there isn't any anything I could possibly say um, just give him a hug and you know tell them you know tell them that I love them that's it that's all you can do we hear the emotion in your voice. It's not just a game. I mean, your mom, these are your sons. They are at the top of their game, the top of their profession. Yep. What does that mean yep. to you? Just such a surreal um, drive. You know, you see them as kids and you wonder how they're going to um, relate to other children. Um, and, and you don't really know. I, you're, they're the best in their city the best maybe in their state and you don't know how that's going to relate to the rest of the country you just have no idea so um i i know they were very talented they were very athletic and it was a joy to go to all the games with lacrosse and baseball and hockey and you know they played almost every single sport Ooh. you can think of basketball so it's just been a pure joy to watch them compete and be allowed to do it for this many years yeah. is just amazing. Donna, I want to go back to, to something we asked you a few moments ago because you're wearing your, your split jersey there. Full disclosure, I'm a Chiefs yeah. fan. My son's a huge Chiefs fan. He actually interviewed Travis a couple of months ago. In <laughs> yeah, I, remember, I remember that. So, yeah. I, I mean, in your heart of hearts, Donna, yeah. if, if, you, if you had to pull oh my for one team, <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to ask that. I can tell you that. I can tell you this. It's not. It's not a team. It's you know both fan bases are absolutely amazing. Um, just give everything that they have. You know to um, on game day, yeah. and I think that. Jason would say that I am going to root for the baby of the family, which is Travis. Mm -hmm. And I keep trying to tell him, no, you've given me grandchildren. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. It's always about the grands. Well, okay, so let me just, let me, let me ask you this. I think you can answer it. We're going to roll some video. I don't know if you can see it. Who has the better dance moves, Jason <laughs> or Travis? Because we're, we're looking at Jason here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. We were shocked because he doesn't do that that often. <laughs> okay, well, game on. Donna, yeah. enjoy the game. You're a winner. Thank you. You know, raising two successful know, kids. Regardless, this is going to be just so much fun. Uh, I mean, somebody's going to win. So, I mean, how, how much better can that be? Yeah, you're going exactly. to win. Go offense. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Thank you. We love Donna. We're going to be rooting for her on Sunday. Now. Let's go to someone else with a lot of fans, a teenager making a big impact on her community. At just 13 years old, Reagan is already setting an example for other kids and adults by showing them the power of persistence. The goal is to be able to help other people figure out how to do things even when it's challenging. Meet Reagan Bischoff, a hardworking eighth grader at school who also plays trumpet, hangs out with her bestie, and plays lacrosse, a sport she's loved since first grade. Good job, Reagan! With lacrosse, all my teammates are really, really supportive. Reagan is not just any 13-year-old defending the goal. Nice, After brain surgery at two months for a seizure disorder, she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, limiting use of the left side of her body, including her left hand. But Reagan refuses to let this incurable, yet treatable condition stop her from chasing her dreams. Reagan, for, for folks who, who don't understand, what is it like living with, with cerebral palsy? Living with cerebral palsy is a big difference from living without it. You won't be able to do certain things like uh, cut fruit or being able to button jeans. I always had a hard time doing those things. 
until I found certain tools. I never say I can't do it. I say, how can we figure this out? To help mobility, Reagan often wears a wireless medical brace in her left leg. Danielle, I would imagine that you have to be quite proud. Yeah, absolutely. Reagan really works hard. There's a lot of things that we uh, throw her way and we don't ever let her say no. Reagan's mission is to inspire young people with similar disabilities to simply go for it even with everyday tasks. And here is a ponytail. So she created the video channel Throw Lefty last year. Most of the time at school, I get asked, what is wrong with your hand? Why do you have this? The hardest part is helping her navigate some of the challenges at school with regards to bullying or with regards to questions. Reagan, tell me about this YouTube channel. My coaches would always yell at me, throw lefty, throw lefty, and I couldn't. I would always get so frustrated with myself. And so one day I figured it out. I had to switch to my left side. So that's why it's called throw lefty. What are you trying to accomplish with, with the videos? I was like, dad, I really want to be able to dry my hair by myself. We found a clamp that would clip to my counter and then I would clip the hair dryer into the clamp. So this is how I dry my hair. Not just drying your hair though. I mean, we're talking cutting apples, tying shoelaces. Yeah, I'm trying to help other kids be more positive and more confident with themselves. While raising awareness, Reagan was among people's girls changing the world in 2022 and was honored by Virginia-based nonprofit Brain Injury Services, where she's received support. But my parents always remind me to, to focus on what I can do rather than what I can't. We couldn't let Reagan go without a well-deserved surprise. Who are some of the players that you've enjoyed watching? I like watching UNC Taylor Moreno because she's really good. Moreno helped University of North Carolina women's lacrosse capture its third national title last year and is currently a pro playing for Athletes Unlimited. I think we have a, a special guest. Taylor, are you, are you here? Oh. Hey, Reagan. <laughs> Reagan, meet Taylor. I can only imagine the pressure of being a goalkeeper in your situation and to see the work that you've put in is an inspiration. Reagan, what do you think? You're really cool and I think you're a really good goalie. On behalf of myself and some of my guys at Nike Lacrosse, um, we're going to be sending you um, a signed Athletes Unlimited jersey. We got some brand new Nike goalie gloves. Thank you so much. Thanks for being such an inspiration to so many. Wow, what a great story. All right, guys, coming up, it is National Bagel and Lox Day. And Al, he's celebrating at a famed spot to get them here in New York. Plus, a nurse bringing strangers together on TikTok. You want to know why? Stay with us. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> you don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Welcome back to Mark National Bagel and Lox Day. Mr. Roker explored a New York staple that's been serving smoked salmon for more than 100 years. Russ and Daughters, take a look. 
I've been waiting in line probably 15, 20 minutes, but it's definitely worth it. I'm super excited to try it for the first time. I mean, it's like the best lox bagel like I've had in the city. In the 1930s, there were hundreds of appetizing stores in New York City. Today, Russ and Daughters is one of the last shops of its kind. Russ and Daughters is the torchbearer of what's called appetizing. And it's the sister food tradition to delicatessen, both of which come up through the Jewish kosher dietary rules. You have to separate fish and dairy from meat. So a delicatessen, strictly speaking, is for meat. The appetizing store is where you go for fish and dairy. Nikki Russ Fetterman's grandmother was one of the original daughters. She runs the shop, and it's nearby cafe with her cousin, Josh Russ Tupper. This is our great-grandfather, Joel Russ, who started the business. Joel, a Polish immigrant, began selling smoked fish from a barrel on the streets of the Lower East Side in the early 1900s. He opened his first shop in 1914. His daughters, Hattie, Ida, and Anne, began working with their dad when they turned 11. The sisters grew up learning all aspects of the business, eventually becoming his partners and creating the first shop in America to bear and daughters in its name. Growing up, you, you follow in the footsteps of strong women who may not have chosen this, but took it on and obviously made it really successful. It's a tremendous feeling to be now the and great-granddaughter and to make an impression on other women, you know, who might want to open a restaurant. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a good customer of ours. And she once said that before she knew the word feminist, when she looked up at the sign, Russ and Daughter, she understood that women could have an impact. Today, Russ and Daughter is best known for its premium smoked salmon, but don't call it lox. When we say bagel and lox, most people are, you know, we're referring to a smoked salmon. But sure. the original bagel and lox was not with smoked salmon. It was cured, that's how it was preserved, but it was very salty. So you needed the bread and the dairy of the cream cheese to mellow out the intensity mm. of the belly lox. And that's how that classic combination came to be. The paper-thin fish at Russ and Daughters is sliced by hand, and it takes up to six months of training to master the technique. Nikki's cousin, Josh, showed me how it's done. So, Al, I hear you have some knife skills. Well, I've been in a fight or two, but there's a trick. The trick is don't look anywhere on the fish. You have to really feel the fish. Be the fish. Be the fish, which is a very difficult concept to train someone. Good. All right. OK. Here we go. Be the fish. Not looking. You should, you should look. I should you look. You got a sharp knife in your hand, Howie. But I only got this part. Not terrible. So, so Josh, I, here's a question. Do you ever get tired of eating salmon? No, thankfully. I think this food is in our blood. It's a taste of home for generations of families. Why has this place been able to not just survive, but thrive? This is food that people turn to for comfort and it is a food that reminds people who, of who they are and where they come from. All right, did that story make you hungry? It sure did. All right, well, get a snack during this break because we got more good news stories coming your way right after this. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, 
every single morning. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's the best time of the morning, time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Welcome back to The Boost. We've all heard the uh, don't talk to strangers thing, but the man you're about to meet ignored that warning and it changed his life for the better. Savannah Sellers has his story. That's like my number one rule of life. You just never give up on that, which gives you meaning, purpose, and love. There's nothing I can do to take away the diagnosis. This is not necessarily the kind of tumor that you can cure. The videos on TikTok are about love. It was like an immediate connection, and it still is. When I talk to him, I feel exactly the same as I did the night we met. Loss. Some people never know love. And for me, the closest thing to God was my, I'll cry, was my mother's love. And everything between. But as you get older, you realize that, you know, life is really, really short. And it's just easier to smile at somebody. People on TikTok unexpectedly sharing their deepest, most personal stories with someone they've never even met. I remember always, I don't know why I'm telling you this, you're a total stranger. I can't believe I'm having this conversation with you. The fact that these strangers can open up to me without ever knowing me, I think that's what floors me. 27-year-old Hunter Prosper of Pittsburgh is the stranger behind the camera. He's also an ICU nurse and says in 2020, he started losing his way amid the daily tragedy of the pandemic. I felt like I was so burnt out that I was losing um, passion for life. But he says he found healing in, of all places, TikTok. Tell me how you go from nurse to TikTok creator. The camera in itself and being able to talk into it, it just felt like I was giving myself therapy. So the first videos I ever made were me just talking about patient stories. And being able to talk about this, it like breathed new life into who I thought I was. Renewed, he began turning the camera around, striking up conversations with random people on the street. List off some of the questions that you ask people. So I think a lot of my popular ones are, uh, who was your first love and why did you fall in love with them? I was dying for that I was too shy. You don't mind me asking what happened after those four years? I married What's the most pain you felt that wasn't physical? My mom, she passed away in a nursing facility and there wasn't anything I could do about it. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? I've been using that one a lot lately. I see a girl who's trying. He says you'd be surprised at how willing people are to reveal their innermost feelings. One of my favorite moments is being able to ask a question and seeing it in the stranger's eyes that this is about to be therapy for them. And you can actually see someone react that way, you just can, on their I mean, face. You can almost feel it, it's palpable. The conversations can last up to an hour. I have a video where it started off and it was bright out, and by the end of it, it was like dark out. But Hunter edits them down into short videos that have gotten hundreds of millions of views. What do you hope that people take away from your videos? I hope they take away that everyone has a beautiful story, a beautiful book um, that they can call their life. So I really hope that these videos are able to make people stop and, uh, and really appreciate the people around them. All right, Hunter, who was your first love and why did you fall in love with them? <laughs> Savannah, you were catching, you were throwing me off with this. <laughs> That's a good question. Where'd you come up with that? <laughs> my first love is without a doubt my mom. And everything I am is because of her and everything I do is because of her. See, that's the kind of answer on the street if I asked somebody that and that's what they said, I'd be like, dang, <laughs> that was a good answer. And the good news continues right here on The Boost. The woman you're about to meet took control of her life and says she manifested the one thing she truly wanted. Take a look. I don't think anything is out of reach. Maybe it's just about resetting your vision for how you get there versus you thinking that you've lost the opportunity. My name is Aisha Sasei. I am a journalist, I am an author. I also run a digital media company called OK Media. I moved to the States in 2005. I was an anchor at CNN International for 13 and a half years. 
I paused every now and then and realized that this is all great, but I'd really love to be a mother. I'd really love to have a child. But when I cast myself forward and I think, what is it that I would regret the most at the end of my life? It will be not having a kid. That feeling was amplified after Aisha's mother suffered a catastrophic stroke six years ago. I think being in that position of a caregiver, realizing the importance of a child to a mother, did kind of bring it home that, oh, it's something that I, I yearn for. Last year, Aisha put that idea into motion. I have a, a yearly ritual, which is to spend New Year's Eve with my vision board. So I moved motherhood right to the top of the board. In 2021, I decided that I was going to do everything I could. I, I was just coming off a really bad relationship. And I remember thinking to myself, if I sit here waiting for the perfect man to come, to come along, I could be waiting, you know, past the point that, that you know, of, of possibility. Aisha's first step was to reach out to a fertility doctor. Aisha came to the appointment with her phenomenal positive attitude. She was full of hope. She was ready for this journey. I think she was feeling empowered. I had done one transfer and it hadn't worked. And we'd had to stop a second transfer halfway through because my body wasn't reacting well to the medication. I went into the bathroom, you know, used the stick, left it, came back, and it said pregnant. And I remember, and I remember just clasping my, stifling a scream and literally falling to my knees. I couldn't believe it. Like, I still getting goosebumps, actually. I say this baby is a culmination of almost a decade's worth of prayers and effort. I absolutely think that this is my child. This is my child who chose me and we're meant to be together. There are many different ways for us to build that path. We can't sit back and not do anything, right? It won't happen without that. So it's very important to put that journey out there and to take control. Today, Aisha is 47 and just weeks shy of meeting her baby girl. While her mom is still in the hospital, Aisha is finding ways to include her on this journey. I did take her hand and put it on my belly and say, your, your grandbaby's here. So, you know, they say that um, she's part of me, my, you know, so she's part of my child too. Oh my God, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Wow. And we just want to say congratulations. Thank you. you know, I think uh, Hoda and I have talked a lot about this because Hoda has two little ones of her own that she that came to her at mm -hmm. the perfect time mm -hmm. a little later in life. Mm -hmm. But to say that out loud, mm -hmm. to speak your biggest dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely something that, you know, not everybody understands, but, you know, that's the whole thing. It's your journey. It's your story. And you know what you need. And I knew that I wanted this child. And... I didn't need anyone else to co-sign or, or understand the path to it. Oof. I was just going to make it happen. Oh, we cannot wait to meet that little one. When we come back, a boost you do not want to miss. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> you don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. We're going to wrap up this episode of The Boost. But before we go, let's put one last smile on your face with this viral video. Check it out. All right, here we go. A New Jersey woman named her rescue pup Rafael Nadog after tennis superstar Rafael Nadal. <laughs> it turns out Raf is just as good as his, it's his true calling as Nadal is on the court. Check it out. Good boy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, <laughs> huh? Okay, what Good is that? Boy, What's happening here? Huh? Rafael the dog is a champion yeah. stick fetcher. Uh, that one looks like a log. I don't even think yeah, that's a stick. Anyway, Olivia Schreiber, the owner, says Rob likes nothing more than fetching sticks, um, often many times his own size. Wow. Rafael wow. and the dog. I love it. All right, that's it for today. We're going to see you next week on The Boost. We're going to celebrate Valentine's Day. We'll have a ton of good news stories all about love. I'm Hoda Kotb. We'll see you then. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, what's buzzing on social media. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. All about those products we've seen on social media and wondered whether to add to cart. Well, we rounded out our favorite trending items from lip gloss, yes, it's making a comeback, to flared leggings, also popular again. And remember, see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Watermelon has been a mega trend when it comes to beauty products. And we have seen all things watermelon taking social media by storm. Now, watermelon sleeping masks are at the top of the social media heap. And few sleeping masks have received as much hype as the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. It's a TikTok star in its own right with over 2.2 million views and fans say it's worth the hype. But I gotta tell you, this sleeping mask had me at the word sleeping. I mean, who doesn't love a product? It goes to work when you hit the hay. And the brand says that this product not only is designed to help make your skin feel smoother, but it helps to refine pores. And they also say that it helps to brighten your skin and also exfoliate. Plus, it's got an impressive list of ingredients that includes real watermelon extract and even hyaluronic acid and AHAs, which is really glycolic acid. And I've got to tell you the scent. It smells so good. It's like fresh watermelons. And this product isn't just a social media star. It's a star in real life. Yep, it's got 73,000 likes on Sephora.com. Okay, now get ready for another TikTok star that beauty lovers are obsessed with. The Dior Addict Lip Glow Oil, and this cult and celeb fave has a hashtag with over 73 million views and climbing. And lip gloss is making a huge comeback. And this ultra shiny gloss has been selling out everywhere. And here's what gets everybody so excited about it. It's a multitasker. It's like a lip gloss and a lip care product all in one. And the brand says that the lip oil is infused with cherry oil, so it nourishes and protects and softens the lips while adding a natural color finish. 
In fact, the brand also says that the lip oil is formulated to adapt to all lip colors to bring out one's own unique and rosy glow. And one of the reasons why lip gloss is having such a big comeback, in my opinion, is we are seeing so much gloss. I mean, on the face, that's been a really big trend, that sort of shiny trend. So it makes sense that it would also transfer to the lips. So now let's talk hair love. There's a lot of love out there for this next product as well as for its founder. These are the Nourishing Shine Drops from JVN, which is brought to you by hair guru and TV personality Jonathan Van Ness. And the brand is so popular that the hashtag for this brand alone boasts over 10.8 million views. And I just love Jonathan's positivity and his enthusiasm and the brand's inclusive vibe. And I also love what the brand has to say about the product, that it makes your hair look like it's lit from within. I mean, shoppers really do rave about how these drops really bring about a rich glow and shine. And if you have a minute, you've got to check out the how-to videos on the site. Jonathan shows you exactly how to use this product, and it's so easy. I mean, you just take a few drops, and then you put them into your hands, you rub them together, and he says to take your hands and just rub it down from sort of the mid shaft down to the ends and work it through. And Jonathan also says that this can be used on all hair types. And the brand says that the product also helps to smooth, frizz bust, and hydrate. Now, next up, we have another trending and affordable accessory that, in my humble opinion, has the capability to transform any outfit in an instant. Yes, the pattern tight is having quite a moment, and we're seeing some major traction from not only social media, but also from high-end designers. And what I love the most about this trend is that you can get in on this designer runway look without the designer price tag. I've actually seen pattern tights from high-end designers starting at $200 up to even $2,500. So forgive me if I get really excited that we've got such affordable options here. So here we have a selection of really great looking pattern tights. Everything from herringbone to a beautiful lace to a heart motif. And we're seeing lots of heart motifs out there. That's a big trend even on its own. And my favorite way to wear them is to pair them with, say, last year's little black dress, right? And suddenly the look is transformed, it's updated. I love wearing these with trousers, especially crop trousers. So you can kind of see the pattern tight peeking out. And you know another really cool way to wear them? You can actually wear them with jeans and distressed jeans. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. You could see the pattern tight through some of the holes. It really is a little fashion trick that I love. Next, we've got a favorite from the aughts that are making a major comeback. I may have called them yoga pants, but Gen Z has dubbed them the flared legging. But one thing's for sure, whatever you call them, they are massive social media stars. So let me introduce you to the airy, real me, high-waisted crossover flare legging, and this style is a double winner. So not only does it have that great flare silhouette, Check it out, it has that crossover waistband that has become so incredibly popular. So the brand says that these leggings are made out of their real knee fabric, and they say it has light support, and this fabric feels really buttery. So it's a really versatile legging. You can wear it hanging out, you can wear it to the gym, you can definitely wear it while you're doing yoga. So I totally get why these are so popular. So now for a sneak peek at spring, let's talk about an incredibly popular shoe that encompasses four big viral trends in one. This it shoe has been on the scene for a while now and thanks to its popularity both on social media and on celebs, we don't see it going anywhere. So let me tell you about what those four trends are. First of all, we've got that mule style, the mule silhouette, which is just really slip in and easy to wear. Also, 
check out these braided straps, the double strap. They're also kind of padded, so that's another massive trend that we're seeing. Also, the block heel. It's a lot easier to wear than the stiletto, especially if we're transitioning from sneakers. And another big trend that we're seeing everywhere is this squared toe sole here. And I really like all of these sophisticated neutrals, and these are essentially a designer dupe. And lastly, I really think that they look expensive. So this is a great viral trend to try out coming up this spring. And this next must-have is one of the coolest fashion gadgets I've run across in a long time. It's the Nori Press, and it has changed the game in both design and innovation. And it is no wonder that it has over 1.4 million views on TikTok. And it's a wrinkle-removing tool. And it's like a cross between an iron and a steamer. And Boy, do I wish I had one of these when I first started out in my fashion career as an assistant to a celebrity stylist. I can tell you guys that I spent about 90% of my time steaming. So I got well acquainted with the conventional steamers and I gotta tell you, pretty much all of them leak. So I was thrilled to try out the Nori and I think the design is just so cool. I mean, look at that. It almost looks like a straightening iron and it works like one too. And one of the things I like so much about when I use this is it's just really easy and it also irons both sides of the fabric at once. So you just clamp it onto the fabric and just pull it down. And oh my gosh, it really is a game changer in the world of ironing and steaming. You don't even need an ironing board. So I love that ease. Plus it's 1.4 pounds, so it's great for travel. You can throw it in your bag and go. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Glow Recipe Sleeping Mask, the Dior Lip Oil, the JVN Nourishing Shine Drops, the Pattern Tights, the Offline by Airy Flare Leggings, the Women's Braided Heeled Sandals, and the Nori Press Steam Iron. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's it for Style Finder. Up next, designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is chatting with Mako and Lovu about some of her favorite must-have products. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Uncle You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> you don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love ya. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now.
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Hi there. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Now, you may know her from Southern Charm. Designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is here with us to talk all things Southern style and more. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Vanita, it's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing great. Listen, I remember the first time I saw you on social media, I was like, wait a minute, who is this gorgeous girl? So I had to hit that follow button. What do you think, you have a huge social media following, what do you think gets people to sort of gravitate towards you? I think people gravitate towards me because I choose not to stick within an aesthetic and like I'm different every day. I show the ins and outs of daily life and the fact that everything's just not perfect. I love that. And I love the um, the photos that you have of you and your mom. So cute. And then you also show a style as well. What's the key to looking pulled together? The key to looking put together is always jewelry. You have to wear like some form of earring or bracelet. That helps pull the entire look together. So if you're not feeling too strong about it, an accessory will definitely help. I agree with that. Accessories are like the cherry on top. Now, Southern right. Charm fans would just not have it if I didn't ask you. Are we going to see more of you on the show? I don't know. You're going to have to watch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> a nice little tease there. I'm here for it. Okay, speaking of things to watch, I love these items that you brought for today's show. Can we start with these portable chargers? A great deal yeah. for two of them. You yeah. get two. I chose the black and white ones. They charge super quick and they're really lightweight, so they don't like weigh the bag down. I feel like a lot of portable chargers are too heavy and this is like a great weight. Absolutely, and I think they're great for every household. If you think how many people in your house have devices, so it's nice to always have chargers. All right, let's move on from chargers to something that charges my life, which is makeup. This blush that you brought here, okay, first of all, you look gorgeous. You have it on. I don't to say that. Right, you have it on? Okay, but why cream on. over powder? <laughs> Cream over powder because cream looks more natural. And I love this blush because two reasons. You get a lot of product and it's super affordable at $6. Oh. And the pigmentation is unmatched. I mean, I'm swatching it right here and I have to agree with you about the pigmentation. It's unmatched. And I like this for all ages too. It looks great on everybody. Even if you have mature skin, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things I am guilty of, Vanita, is not cleaning my devices, even my sunglasses. I love this next pick. Tell me about it. Okay, so the next pick is just so good. And I love the fact that it comes with microfiber tiles. So you make sure that there's no lint or anything like that on your screen or on your sunglasses when you're done wiping your products down. Oh, I love that. Look at how it just cleaned my sunglasses. I'm so guilty of having foggy glasses. So this is a <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, speaking of lifesavers, let's talk about being in the kitchen. A lot of people don't really like prep work when it comes to cooking. This vegetable chopper, I'm obsessed. Also, like to give you a little background, I went to culinary school. Oh. So like, look at that. I love all the little fun inventions for the kitchen. And I feel like this vegetable chopper is a lifesaver for everyone because one, no one likes to chop onions. No one likes to chop potatoes. And it just makes it so simple. It has like, this little square here and it comes with different size like blades you can see right here and it's just perfect and it's easy to clean oh i love that onions make me cry is that crazy but it's true to this day they still make me cry so i love that yes and then a little tip for you is to either run your onion under hot water or put it in the freezer right before you cut it so I shouldn't say the fumes, but like the aroma that right. might come out quickly. <laughs> I know what you mean, I know what you mean. And last but not least, you talk about jewelry being the key to looking pulled together. You have this jewelry organizer, which I think is fantastic. Yes, it comes in three different shapes. Um, so I also, I have one for both bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. And it's just so easy 
and things don't get tangled up and you just don't have to think about it when you're gonna get dressed and put your accessories on. I find that it saves me money too because I'll go out to the store, I'll shop online and be like, wait, I already have that because I could see it in my jewelry organizer. Well, Vanita, thank you so much for joining us. What else are you up to? What else are you working on next? Right now, I am working on an adaptive wear brand. So that's a project that nice. is keeping me busy. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, we look forward to following you and good luck with all your ventures. We'll see you really soon. Thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, now let's run through the products one more time. The portable charger, the e.l.f. Cosmetics Cream Blush, the Woosh Screen Cleaner Kit, the Full Star Vegetable Chopper, the Strata Life Jewelry Organizer. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock has more popular products in editor's picks, like a cordless vacuum that weighs just three pounds, just in time for spring cleaning. Don't go away. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> you don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> what do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, on Lester. It's the best time of the morning, time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, and we have been sharing those products we can't get enough of that we've discovered on social media. I have some more favorites from Old Navy's new 3-in-1 jeans, more on that in a bit, to the Va Broom, just in time for spring cleaning. See that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Finding the perfect pair of jeans doesn't have to be hard, and Old Navy is making it easier than ever with the new Fits You Denim Collection. Each pair is designed to fit three different sizes to adjust to your perfect shape. This one features the best-selling Rockstar Skinny Cut, which has a flattering high-rise fit and a wallet-friendly price. And moving on to some beauty finds, Milk Beauty is one of those popular beauty brands taking over social media, and their new launch is no exception. The brand's brand new Rise Mascara is a vegan mascara that, according to the brand, 
is formulated to lift, lengthen, and curl lashes with weightless volume. And according to the brand, all you need is a few coats and you don't have to worry about clumping or smudging for up to 12 hours. And when it comes to accessorizing, a cute headband is the perfect way to add a little pop to any outfit. And it helps amp up a good hair day. The knotted headband trend isn't going anywhere, but pearls are actually the latest accessory that's taking over the fashion world. So with this one, you get two trends with this chic find. And you get a set of four for about $15. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna wear these all the time. And staying on the topic of hair, Heatless curlers are having an unexpected social media hit this season. These come with a set of 28 heatless waivers and all you need is about 20 for a full head of hair. And according to the brand, to use it, all you have to do is grab small sections of damp hair and weave it into the curler using the tool. And in about an hour, you're gonna get a full head of waves and curls and you've gotta see the results to believe them. And you don't have to be on hashtag clean talk to appreciate this next find. It's a two-in-one cleaning tool that's simply genius. It's a lightweight cordless broom with a built-in mini vacuum that will have you ditching that dustpan for good. The Va Broom does all the work for you. So once you're done sweeping, you just tilt the broom on its side and it sucks up all the dirt and debris in one go. Voila. Household chores have never been so much easier. And speaking of chores, if you're like me and your handbag is probably a catch-all for everything and it can get dirty so fast, this clean ball is really cool because it's designed to pick up dirt and crumbs, everything that's floating around in that bag. All you have to do is pop it in your purse. You can even use it in the kid's backpack and it does all the work for you. And the brand says, what's really great about this too is you can reuse it. You just pop it open, you wash it, and you can use it over and over again. And we all wanna get organized and labels make the job so much easier. So whether you're tackling your file cabinet or a spice rack, this little wireless label maker is absolutely incredible. It creates labels using an app that lets you customize everything from size, font, and even symbols. And you know we love a QR code and this one can actually make one. Last but certainly not least is this pizza maker that's taking TikTok by storm. It is one of those things you wish you had discovered sooner. It's a rotating pizza oven and it makes delicious crispy pies in about 25 minutes. But it can also be used to cook other snacks like chicken wings and quesadillas, grilled sandwiches, and even a cookie pie. It comes with a self timer and a nonstick coating on the pan. So according to the brand, cleanup is an absolute breeze. This one has us so excited to entertain this spring and summer. This product is really great. So let's run through the products one more time. The Old Navy 3-in-1 Rockstar Jeans, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara, the Velvet Headbands, the Heatless Curl Kit, the Va Broom, the Clean Ball, the Wireless Label Maker, and the Pizzazz Pizza Oven. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Editor's Picks and our show today. Here's a sneak peek at next week's episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Shop Today is back, bringing you amazing products, the hottest tips, and inspiring conversations. And now to celebrate Women's History Month, we're highlighting products by incredible female founders from skincare to fashion, jewelry, and more. Plus, boxing champ and entrepreneur Layla Ali stops by. What do you think your past has taught you that has brought you to be this incredible businesswoman? I always had this desire to be independent. It's not about just how many hours I work. It's really about how much I put in, how much effort I put into growing these businesses. It took a lot of hard work. It didn't just happen overnight. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? 
Heart Smart today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. And what are we making today? Homemade pizza. Homemade pizza, this is a favorite, right? So in order to make the homemade pizza, we're going to make homemade sauce. The key to the homemade sauce, San Marzano tomatoes. I probably shouldn't have had you in a white shirt. <laughs> Put your hand in the sauce, it's okay to get dirty. And squeeze them. Work on the garlic. Ready? Oh, I'm getting it nudity. <laughs> well, when the garlic clove's not wearing its clothes, it's nudity. <laughs> this has got all its stuff on it. Mm -hmm. And watch, if I smash it, all that stuff peels right off. Can we smash you? <laughs> yes, we can smash you. <gasps> A couple glugs of olive oil. Garlic goes right oh. in. After this cooks for a little bit, let's pull out the basil, and then we're going to throw it in the food processor. So now we're going to wait a whole bunch of hours for the sauce to thicken up. What should we do in the meantime? Go to the pizza store. What do we do at the pizza store? Get pizza! We get pizza dough, right? Pizza dough! Fun fact, you can go to the pizza store and buy pizza dough so you don't have to make it at home. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? Can I just have two large doughs? Let's go make some pizza. First, I'm gonna prep this pan. Wow. Oh, we do have to get our hands dirty. Prepped. Wow. See the fun part? Want me to throw it? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> 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 wow! Ours is so crispy. You're working hard today. I have some spinach here huh? with some olive oil. Huh? And huh? then put on prosciutto. Fine. I'm gonna put this in the oven. Uh. Mm. 
for making a mess. <laughs> for these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Done slash food. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. It's fun. So obviously in New York City you can buy pizza at any block you're yeah. on, but it's it's just fun. Calvin loves to get his hand dirty. What you didn't see, he is occupying himself with just playing with dough while I'm cooking the rest of dinner. So which is fun. Right. It's just fun. Perfect. I know. I really so. like this series. And you know, I can't wait for when he's older, he's gonna cherish these times. I hope so. Sure. When he's you mean when he's working for us here? <laughs> yeah. He's the worst is going to be when he Child loses interest laws. and doesn't want to do it. Oh, like, yeah. No, you're doing cooking with Cal, right? <laughs> Keep them coming, Cal. And <laughs> fish. And Brian. Yes. Give the fish some love. I know. Fish Brian edits that whole stuff. thing. Hey, guys. If you're craving pizza before dialing up delivery, try my personal pies. They're light in calories, but fat on flavor, and they come packed with protein, fiber, and a whole host of vitamins and minerals, thanks to the secret crust. I'm starting with a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. Then I'm adding in half a teaspoon of baking powder, a little bit of dried oregano, and a little bit of garlic powder too. And I'm just going to mix this up. I'm adding in a quarter cup of a super thick Greek yogurt. And as you're mixing, you're probably thinking, Joy, this is never gonna turn out like a dough. Trust me, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna put my hands in and I'm just gonna start pressing down on these little dough balls. It's actually kind of fun. And I'm going to just roll it into a ball. And it is ready to be rolled out. And I'm gonna miss a baking sheet with oil spray. And because I wanna show you two variations of the pizza, I made another dough ball earlier. We're gonna smash it down using the palm of your hand. Take a rolling pin or a Mr. Bottle or a soup can. <laughs> and you can just roll these out. You want about seven inch diameter. We're gonna put these in the oven on the middle rack set at 450 for eight minutes. Now in my house, we can never decide between a cheesy pizza and a saucy barbecue chicken pizza. So I'm gonna show you how to make both types. So I'm starting with a standard cheese pizza. I'm adding some marinara sauce and then you just add some part skim mozzarella cheese, just like this. And now we're gonna make a saucy barbecue chicken pizza. I'm putting on about two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. And now for the chicken. So I've taken shredded chicken. You could use leftover, rotisserie chicken, anything goes, just shred it up and add in a tablespoon of barbecue sauce and then place it right on top of your pizza. And I think barbecue chicken pizza works really well with the addition of thin red onion slices. And then last but not least, I'm using a Mexican blend shredded cheese for this pizza. So I'll be putting this in the oven now just for five to eight minutes to get the cheese ooey gooey and melty. And our beauties are done. But one more thing, a kiss of fresh herbs, some fresh basil for our cheesy pizza and some parsley or cilantro for our barbecue chicken pizza. Guys, these pies will steal a pizza your heart. <laughs> Ooh, mamma mia. Yeah. <laughs> for these recipes, head to today.com slash food and we'll be right back. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> no stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> no stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are bringing you Pizza Bob. You heard that right. Pizza Bobka with more than <laughs> 2 million views and counting. We asked our friend, our chef, who, by the way, is always in Studio yes, 1A. Missed Anthony, him. we missed you, the host of today's original digital series, Saucy, to show us how it's done. Okay, Hi, Anthony. Anthony, so TikTok's all the rage, babe. Hi, ladies. Hey, I'm, guys, I'm addicted to TikTok. It's like unhealthy at this point. Every night for two hours, I'm just Anthony, like. Anthony, can I tell you something? And I haven't even told this to Hoda, but what? Sunday night I wanted to make a nice dinner for Henry, and I made that TikTok feta cheese feta. tomato oh. thing. I knew you were gonna say you made the feta <laughs> bake. It's crazy. It, it was so easy, but this thing looks a little more tricky. It is so easy. Is this one tricky? Okay, it looks it looks crazy, but it's not. Um, first of all, store bought pizza dough. You can buy it at any supermarket and even local pizzerias are more than happy to sell you a pound of their dough. Yes. Make your life easy. First thing you want to do, it's a little tricky to work with. Take it out of the fridge, let it come to room temp, anywhere from 30 minutes to even up to two hours, depending on how warm or cold your apartment or house is. So I rolled it into a 12 by 16 inch rectangle. Mm -hmm. And once that's done, time for the fun. So one thing I do different that you're not going to find on TikTok and most of these pizza babkas is I added a tomato element because pizza needs tomato I sauce, right? I agree with you. Hallelujah. I agree. So thank you. So <laughs> I'm using tomato paste, which is so concentrated and a little goes a long way. So literally a schmear. It's going to add a little sweetness and it's going to give us that tomato we're looking for. If you use regular sauce, it's too wet and you're going to have a mess later oh, on. Okay. Okay. So... A little bit of pecorino cheese. It's salty. It's delicious. I put it on everything. <laughs> Literally every single recipe I use has pecorino, <laughs> unless it's a dessert. And then for the fun thing, our fillings. You can use whatever you like. I'm using pepperoni and some mozzarella. And here's a trick. You want to use deli-sliced ah. meats and cheeses. The bigger and the flatter, the better. If you use small pepperonis that you find pre-sliced in the store or shredded cheese, when you go to shape it later, all your fillings are going to fall out. So ah, long, make uh -huh. sure you get deli sliced. And you can use, like I said, anything. Ham, salami, provolone. Um, Yum. I did this backwards. Mm. I should have put my pepperoni on first. No, that's so what I think tomato, tomato. Yeah, that looks real good. Mm-hmm. So once you have your fillings in, and I left a little bit of a border, you just are going to what? roll what it. Doing? We're kind of making like a stromboli here. Do you want to put like flour on your hands or can everybody roll it like you can? Because that looks great. You can. If you have like um, marble countertops, you want to start with a little flour. But if you add too much, it's going to actually help the dough contract a little bit. It's nice to have a little sticky action with your counter. Okay. And pinch Look it closed. So Let's once it's it rolled, yeah. pinch it closed. I trim the edges off just because I don't want all that extra dough. It's all about the filling for me. <laughs> and this is what I'm <gasps> left with. This no. is the fun part, guys. Leaving oh an inch at the most at the top, cut down through, and slice all the way to your cutting board. Uh-huh. And are you ready? Yeah. Can you guys see how cool yes, that is? Yes, it looks like a cake, a layered cake. So now what? I'm going to just gently twist Rabbit. it a little bit. Okay. And how cool is that? And then you that bake look? that. Then baby? you bake it. I have a greased um, loaf pan here, and what mm -hmm. I did earlier was some butter, some oil, mm. and some garlic, and let it steep. And this is kind of reminiscent for me of like a garlic knot. Yes. Oh, yum. And I greased the pan, and now I am literally going to slather this. It's mm. going to like almost fry. Will you show us the <laughs> finished product? Us. Because will you show us what that baby will looks show like. You the we gotta see. And will you send us some in the of mail? Of course. Because oh, we want that. Oh, Dang. Anthony. 
Beautiful. That looks gorgeous. Oh, my God. We it's so good. We miss it's you. So we cool. miss you. We're saving your kitchen for you. Can't wait to see you back All right. here. All right. Thanks, Anthony, for Thanks, this ladies. recipe. Head to today.com slash food. And feels What's the latest like. film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Todd Namas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News. Streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load. Every single morning. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We are going to make a mashup that you didn't realize you needed, pizza meatloaf. Mm, here to show us how is Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes and author of Everyday Grand. Hey, Jocelyn, thank you. Mm -hmm. this, yes. is, uh, this is a heck of a concept. Yeah. I know, right? Because my kid loves pizza. It's like, what's for breakfast? Pizza. Yes. Like, what do you want for dessert? Pizza. pizza. Everything. So I was like, I've got to make pizza variations. Right. Okay. Of, like, so this the is the Pilella. best of meatloaf with a pizza. Exactly, with that pizza twist. Okay. So I'm going to start with some pepperoni because okay. she loves pepperoni. My daughter right. loves pepperoni. So I'm just going to just dice it up. You can make it as small as as big as you like. Mm -hmm. You like a lot of texture. You can make it big. Bigger, sure. you want smaller, blend it in, and then like a meatloaf, we just start adding so stuff you together, add the pepperoni right? to the ground beef. Yep. Wow. Or ground and it's going to give that, yeah, ground That's turkey. Meat ground, on meat. Meat on meat. meat. It's a meat It's a meat It's a meat <laughs> That's, yes. <laughs> a meat, a meat, meat lovers will love this, right? Okay. So pepperoni in there. I've got some garlic okay. going in there. Mm. Got some parsley. And then you can throw those eggs in for, for me. The binder? Yep, get it in there. Got to okay. bind it up. And then we've got some Italian breadcrumbs okay. in here. Got to get that in there. And then we've got some seasonings. We've got some oregano. We've got um, some seasoning salt. We've got some black it's like pepper. Like the pizza part. Of yeah, it. yeah, the pizza part. And okay. then we've got some milk as well. Okay. Just just whole milk. Whole, whole thing. You can use whatever milk you okay. want. Okay. If you want to use like a coconut milk, if you want to use something like. like can you soda over milk. stir this too much? Well, I like to just make sure Look everything's that. combined mm -hmm. as much as possible. Also, you can play around with the toppings, like yeah. if you like olives, if you want to throw oh. mushrooms in mm -hmm. here, okay. like you can do that too. And then we get that all stirred up, and then we get it into our loaf pan. Okay. This is the fun part: is I like to create a well right oh. in the center, and throw cheese. Oh, well, in the now we're talking. Is this mozzarella? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I mean, it's a pizza meatloaf. Okay. We're okay. Now the sauce. Yes, now the sauce. So to make this easy, like, people can buy, like, a pizza sauce, mm -hmm. like, at the grocery store. Right. And then I like to doctor it up, just add some additional sure. seasonings okay. in there. Got some garlic powder. Okay. Got some oregano, some basil, mm -hmm. and got some parsley. And then for a little kick, I've got some red pepper. Ah, there you go. Is that yep. basil? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just get okay. that in there. 
and then you're gonna stir it up. Now, if you don't have time, just grab Buy a piece the sauce. Of right, right. Keep it moving. All right. This can still be a really easy thing. You're gonna bake it. All that now, cheese cover, is gonna ooze uh, in the center. Where do you cover? You cover this up just so, with the sauce. So yeah, if you have some ex uh, extra meat, you can just start uh, flipping it over the top. Mm -hmm. We're gonna not do it with oh, the hands. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then it covers the well, and right. then you bake it up, Look and then this. the cheese like just melts in the center when it oh, comes out goodness. of the oven. Look oh, just the presentation alone. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. It's so fun. And yes. then you just drizzle the sauce on it? And then you it? just drizzle the sauce and, and serve it with I'll it. try it. Come on, get into wow. it now. Here we go. That's great. Isn't mm. it so young? What a great concept. Mm. Yes. And this is good for, like, football, too. Like, oh, this sure. Is, right? Mm. That's really good. You can good. even make little individual ones. Yes, you can make little individual oh, ones. Fantastic. Serve them up. It's so easy. That's really, really good, good Josh. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> mm. I love the marriage. And today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here with the, with the really cool, fun dinner idea. She's taking a seasonal winter vegetable, and she's giving it a pizza makeover. Is that right, okay. Joy? Oh yeah, you guys are gonna love this one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking two beloved dishes, saucy spaghetti and cheesy pizza, colliding them, and we're gonna build it in a spaghetti squash. And for people that haven't experimented yet with a spaghetti squash, I'm gonna give you the 101, everything you need to know. Head to the store, it's budget friendly and it's available all winter long. Okay. I love this vegetable. So the hardest part about using a spaghetti squash is slicing it, right? Yeah. Because it's, it has a thick skin, it's heavy. So here's the ultimate hack. I put it in the microwave oh. for three minutes and it softens it up and it just makes it that much easier. There it goes, oh, right? Brilliant. Just three minutes. And That's the cool nice. part is not awesome, only, oh, thank you for that. <laughs> We're like, ooh. So, <laughs> so here I am, I'm cutting it up. You still need a nice sharp knife mm -hmm. and you will scoop out the seeds and you could use the seeds to prepare something else or you could just discard them. But then you're basically ready to go. So here I have mine right, right over here and we're gonna zhuzh the inside a little bit before we bake it. So mm -hmm. I'm adding in about just a teaspoon of olive oil or you could spray it as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna rub this with my hands a little bit and then sprinkle on a little bit of kosher salt, and a little bit of black pepper. You take your baking sheet. Now, this is very important. Okay. When you bake it in the oven, what you want to do whoops, is flip them upside down. Mm -hmm. So the cut part is going to go down on the baking sheet. In the oven, this goes set at 400 for about 30 minutes. Now, mm -hmm. normally, a spaghetti squash will take about 40 minutes. But remember, we slightly cooked it already in the microwave. So not okay. only do you make it softer to cut, you also cut back on cook time. Okay. So while my squash is in the oven, I want to make this super hearty and um, protein packed. So I take a few strips of pre-cooked poultry sausage. The poultry sausage is gonna be healthier. I slice it up into thin wheels just like that. Truth be told, you could skip the next step, but when you sear it, it just intensifies that flavor. It's gonna brown it, it's gonna bring it to the next level. So I would say, go for it. It's just a couple of minutes. Now our squash is ready. And I came out of the oven, so I flip it over. You can oh, see it's nice and good. cooked. Yeah. Caramelized. And we are gonna turn this into spaghetti. And this is why it's called spaghetti squash. You take a fork mm -hmm. and you just fluff, just like this, mm -hmm. and you wind up making a great big shell yeah. filled with spaghetti strands. Let me make sure that you could, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanna try it. And yes. so you, got, you have to try this. Yeah. And there's a lot of different variations. So I'm gonna show you how to just make now a straight pizza variation. And, um, and then later on Instagram, I'll show you all different other variations as well. Hawaiian style, oh. I got a veggie style. So you pour your sauce inside. Oh, look at that. Now, let's go back to the sausage, guys. I'm gonna take my sausage, and in it goes. This is creative. This is great. Stir this up. Now it's pizza, so what do we need? We need cheese, Jeez. right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit more sauce over the top. Okay. See, and I'm always I got like a my... little skeptical with some of these recipes because this sounds so healthy, but this looks delicious. Dylan, you got to make it. You got to make <laughs> it. And then 
I'm going to put a little bit of parma on here and That's then nice. a little bit of crushed oh, red nice. pepper flakes or oregano. Yum. This goes under the broiler for mm, just a good. few minutes. So we have a picture of the finished. It is gooey and oh, ooey. There it is. Oh, good. Coming wow. right out this. of the oven. Yeah. Yum. And again, I also have, um, I'm going to show you over here. Ooh. I have a version with pineapple nice. and yeah. with Pizza. sliced ham if you want. Mm. Yeah. I, I think some people are team yes and team yeah. no for you this one, but you if you love it, it's really it. nice. Joy, <laughs> you could pretty much put anything in here, and this one is filled with amazing. vegetables. Joy, thank you. Like thank the vegetable you. version of the bread bowl. Well that's done. Bread. Well that's done, right. Joy. That's thank right. You, Joy. For that <laughs> recipe, Bye -bye, you know guys. where to go, folks. It's today.com slash food. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News. Streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. How about a delicious dessert pizza? I love a dessert pizza. Okay, Kristen Tomlin, the founder and CEO of Dough, right here in New York City. She's got two sweet pizza treats that your family are gonna love. Kristen, this is a great idea, a dessert pizza. I know, I always think about pizza being savory, but yeah. I'm all for it being for dessert too. Okay, so what are we starting with? What's, this one is a s'mores the pizza? s'mores pizza, exactly. Mm. So it's got a cookie crust, and the key to this is a little bit of graham oh, cracker yes. crumbs in the crust, so you have that, that graham flavor best. in every yes. single bite. What I'm gonna put you to work. What okay, sure. in that mixture? So that also has baking soda, baking powder, salt, and some all-purpose flour. Okay. Amazing. And then we've got all brown sugar right here. Mm. A little Ooh, bit of melted butter, wow. one egg. Just one. I love a good recipe that doesn't use a mixer. You can just yes, do it all in so much one easier. Bowl. So it's basically a graham cracker crust on the bottom. Exactly, okay. exactly. So that all goes in. And mix then sit. that. Do you refrigerate it after? No, you don't even have to refrigerate. Oh, really? It goes right from here into here. this. And then this I love having this just wow. um, for your fingers oh. so they don't get. Too yes, messy, duck and you to can it. press yeah. it all the way down. So you just spread it out, just spread like pizza, out. like just a like, pizza dough. Exactly. And okay. you obviously have to put some oil on the bottom or something. No, or no? I don't. She it doesn't. has enough butter in it. You don't have <gasps> so to necessarily. You could good. put parchment paper, but okay. Why bother? Exactly. So Why crush bother? Crushy crush. So eat, then, yeah, keep pressing it out, and then you're gonna load it up with mini marshmallows. Mini. Um, okay. Is this the greatest recipe to do with kids? <laughs> right. It's so you fun, and you don't need you know the whole campfire situation. You can do it right in the oven. You just want to leave a little bit of room around the outside. Side edge, okay, um, so that it can like the crust. Spread. Okay, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and then do you bake it? Before? So you bake it before it goes okay. in the oven 350, 15 to 20 15 minutes to 20. until the marshmallows look toasted Ooh. and the outside crust Ooh. is and then nice and golden. And then you're gonna top it right when it comes out of the oven. So top it the when it's warm. The chocolate's gonna melt. You're gonna add some more graham cracker pieces to it, and you can also just go raid your pantry. We've got Oreos. You could look do what's happening. Sprinkles. Here. I know. I'm having a bite How over fun. here. I'm having a bite yeah. of this guy. It's really oh yummy. Oh my God, it's like a regular slice. Exactly, so it's mm. it's gonna be this nice cookie crust on the outside, but gooey mm. in the middle. It's mm. my God. Mm. so yummy. Oh my God, with the Oreo cookies. Yeah, just yeah. when before you slice it, wait about 15 minutes for it to cool, so it doesn't, you know. Still get that melty, um, oh my God. gooey marshmallow mm. vibes, but delicious. Mm. <laughs> so good. Gooey, gooey. Uh, so okay, let's go healthier. Okay, so okay. 
We've got a watermelon pizza. Okay. You're going to want to do the idea. slice from the largest part of the watermelon, okay, so the no. middle, and then you actually cut this before you even decorate it. Okay. So cut it into eight slices, ten, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then this one is super healthy. It uses Greek yogurt. Oh, that's okay. Do you if, put sugar in the Greek yogurt? No, no. no. You could okay. add a little vanilla extract if you wanted, but I also I like just getting the yeah. vanilla kind of um, Greek yogurt, or if you want to do it vegan, you can do a vegan yogurt, whatever your favorite so is. So you just kind of so slap cut the it. yogurt yeah, all on top. Exactly. You, I'm going to go down. Yeah, yeah you use should. whipped cream? You could if you want it to be sweeter. Yes. Absolutely. You could okay. even use like a little bit of vanilla frosting if you Ooh. really want to go all in for the dessert. Yeah. But this is really fun for the kids because they can add whatever toppings they want, their favorite fruit. Whoa. What? What's happening over there? You gotta smear it, uh, don't you? Yeah, you got. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, yes. I, no, no, that's okay. Is that okay? There's no the wrong way. There's no wrong I way. I'm not trying to. You got it. You got it. I'm not trying to. Exactly, that's right? Okay. It's beautiful. Okay. No, it actually does look but pretty you know what I like. She's it doing does. Because all the things stick to it. Right. Okay. Yours are all rolling around. And then it's already cut, so it's no, easy. because I'm doing it the way Kristen. To share. Well, because you're always following rules. I'm doing is the example. Mint? It is mint. Ooh, that's mm. cool. delicious. Ooh, blackberries. Yum. And some strawberries. I love And then you could add some chocolate chips to this, too. Right, right. Or, you know what? This could, what? This could be breakfast. Oh. My daughter would absolutely oh. love this. How old are your kids? Uh, my daughter is two, going two. on 22. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. does she like cooking? She does, okay. she loves baking. Okay. She, so we she knows that I'm the cookie, oh, her cookie cute. gal. Mm. I'm eating some of the top meats, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Take a bite. You just want to chill this before you serve it. So you could serve it, you know, I love it. right like this or stick it in it's the fridge. It's really good. I love, it. I love it. This is such a clever, smart idea. And we're going to try to make summer, it. Right? Yeah. Okay, one more bite. Mmm. 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 Plain yogurt so looks good. great. I, I agree. I thought it needed whipped cream, but so I'm good. wrong. No. Nope. Oh, God. Sweet enough with that fresh fruit. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Kristen. To get these recipes, head to today.com slash food. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need them all. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. Order our Roker. I'm doing it here. I'm doing it here.